Ah, uh, yo, so that was good job, man, Lizzie. Back to another game video. This time I got Doki Doki Literature Club plus some sh I don't know. They just gave me a really um detailed warning about depression, and I might want I might not want to play this game. So I'm already knowing y'all get me playing some kind of. See, this is the thing about y'all, bro. Y'all got stuck on class of 09 and never let that shit go. This is exactly why I'm not. This is exactly why I'm not dropping the last episode for a minute, bro. Y'all gonna have to wait. Y'all gonna have to wait. Y'all did it to yourselves, bro. Anyway, we got Doki Doki Literature Club. Thought you niggas been telling me to play this shit. Finally getting around to it. I don't got to say, so I'm not gonna waste nobody else's time. We just been up into it, bro. Hey! Who is folks? How how I do my thing? Spacebar? Okay. I see in the new... Uh, I see in the new... Mmm, this is another one of those games where I gotta get my voice acting on. I hate that shit. Alright, bro. Damn, I look greasy to the bitch! Whoa! I need to put a um towel on my face, bitch. Hold on. I don't got no towel, bitch. Y'all just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> Y'all just gonna have to deal with shine. I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. Nigga, just enjoying life. What is your problem? That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know the kind of friend you never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. Huh? I read that wrong. We used to watch school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently. And I'm get tired of waking up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. Bro, motherfuckers just want a friend, dickhead. However, I just sigh an idol in front of the crosswalk and let how you catch up to me. If you wouldn't have left her in the first place, she wouldn't have had to do that. Um. <laughs> I overslept again. But I caught you this time. She said, I don't know why I'm making her sound like a, I don't know. Maybe. But only because I decided to stop and wait for you. See, my character sound like a bitch. Like, I don't know. Eh? You say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. Like, that's mean. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. You know what's crazy? I just found out, like, I had no interest in going over there in the first place just because of, you know, but... I just found out that in Japan, if you act out of the social norm, you will genuinely be, um, what's the word? Like, you won't be dealt with. That's, 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 that's the wrong way to go about this. I just found out that if you act, like, outside of the norm, people will ostracize you, basically. I just found that out. So, I guess that's why my character is acting like this. I don't know. Somebody said it's racist to assume that this is in Japan. Okay, my bad, bro. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. Like, thank you. <laughs> I guess you don't have it in me to be mean. Uh, mm. I guess you don't have it in me to be mean if you want it. Yep. Mm -mm. Whatever you say, bitch. <laughs> Damn, that gangster came out of me for a minute. It didn't even say that on the caption. We cross the street together and make our way to school. As you draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club. I don't. Uh, mm, that's not me. Well, that is me. I told you already, I'm not really interested in joining no clubs, bro. I ain't been looking for one either. Eh, that's not true. Like, how you gonna tell me what the fuck I'm doing? You told me you would join the club this year. Oh, I lied. I did. I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. If my character has a dingling, this one of them ladies. If you got a if you got a nigga just hovering around you and he not making no moves, 99% of the time his ass is trying to fuck. I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you know that right now. Niggas ain't listening to shit coming out your mouth. I don't give a fuck what you did yesterday, what happened at work, who your friends are and what they did. And even if they do care a little bit, them niggas is really only around because they trying to get in the draws. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, and I'm and I'm and this is how I know. This is how I know. Tell me what that nigga just went through yesterday. If you just spoke to him today, tell me something that happened to him yesterday. Matter of fact, tell me the biggest thing that happened to him this month. Somebody said it's only the, the 8th of January. Is it the 8th? No, it's the 9th. It's only the 9th of January. Okay, what about last month? Tell me something big that happened to last month. If you can't tell me nothing big in his life, he doesn't tell you and you don't ask, y'all not real friends. Um, anyway, this nigga not a real friend. That's that's the moral of the story. My character's not a real friend. So he likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting on by the average... Wait, what? Getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh. I was talking about... Mm. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Bitch, you trying to be funny? <laughs> like, come on. <coughs> Excuse me. Your happiness is really important to me, you know? Is yours important to you? And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat. In a few years, because you're not used to the real world. What the fuck is a neat? Is that that? Is that y'all version of incel? Like, what the fuck is that? You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, nah, damn. 
I'll look into a few clubs, bro. If that's if that's what make you happy, that's what I'll do, bro. I got you. No promises. I just promised. Alright, this bitch. Okay. <sighs> Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Like... Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? Because you want some coos. You're horny. More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit. Even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. Mm. I haven't seen no exaggeration so far. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. So he wants me to check out some clubs. Pull them panties off! Pull them panties off! Somebody said not that type of club. Mm. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Sayori, bro, what the fuck? Sayori must have come in the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I could have looked around and told you that, buddy. Thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out. So I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's gonna make you late to your own club, bro. Like, take care of yourself. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know. No, uh. Well, that you could come to my club, like. Sayori. I was just finna join the anime club. We finna be talking about goddamn infinite void, bitch. <laughs> and, like, you know what I'm saying? Niggas don't want. What are you join? What's your club? Like, there's no way I'm going to your club. Eh, <laughs> meanie. What's this pout shit you do? You look like a damn... <laughs> you look like a damn beat face goldfish. I don't like that. So here he is vice president of the literature club. Yeah, I'm not joining that. Me in real life, not joining that. I hate books. Somebody said it makes sense. You can't read. <laughs> not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. Why wouldn't you know? She's the whole fucking vice president. What are you talking about? In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Okay. Bro, the inside of y'all ear ever fucking tickle, bitch? Oh, every time I swallow. What the fuck is that? Since she's the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she's inherit, uh, inherited the vice president title. Okay. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Oh, bro. Come on, please. Why you care so much anyway, bro? Like, well, well, well kind of told the club yesterday that i would bring in a new member and natsuki make cupcakes and everything <laughs> don't make no fucking promise you can't keep don't speak for me bitch the fuck who is you like i can't tell if sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's cunning or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out i'm gonna lean towards the second option she don't seem like a dick to me you get it? Cause all right, I let out a long sigh. Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go. All right, bitch, button up your fucking shirt first. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. Damn. Um, fuck is this Justin Bieber? Yummy? I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here. Uh, this bitch introduces me as a new member. I'm, I've, I've already been taken. I've, I've already been sacrificed. sacrificed. I told you, don't call me a new member. It's too late. Mm. I glance around the room. Welcome to the literature club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Okay. Sorry, he always says nice things about you. Seriously, you brought a boy? Who the fuck is that? I damn near thought that was Sayori. Button your damn shirt up, bitch. <laughs> like, way to kill the atmosphere. Okay, first of all, if it wasn't for this this pink text bar down below me, that shit on your head would be polluting my screen. So watch out. Ah, <laughs> for some, hey, y'all ever get weird saying y'all own name, bro? I don't know. Ah, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. I don't like that they. I don't. I don't like that they all looking like directly at me. It's making me feel uncomfortable. All words escape me in this situation. How'd you know? Like this club, is full of incredibly cute girls. All right. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. I already said what I had to say. You polluting my damn screen. <laughs> Sorry. Not ski. <clears throat> Maybe it's just growling me. 
the girl with the sour attitude who's apparently then uh, whose name is apparently natsuki is one i don't recognize her small figure makes her look like a first year student mm. she is also the one who made cupcakes according to sayori you can just ignore her when she gets moody oh she's one of those okay Sorry, he says that quietly into my ear and then turns back to the other girls. Anyway, this is not Suki. Always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Don't say things like that. Bitch, don't be bashful. <laughs> don't be bashful. <laughs> Take the compliment and walk. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a um seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Oh well, it's nice to meet both you niggas. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? Yep, that's right. Great to see you again, Juan. I don't know why I make her sound like nasal. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk, but we in the same class. Okay. Monica is probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, and athletic. Basically completely out my league. This nigga already this nigga already putting a number on his dick. Which one can he hit? Yep, that's what this is. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little you, you too, Monica. All right, nigga, you act like you ain't never had a girl in your face before. Calm down. Come sit down, Juan. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. <laughs> like, bro. I'm finna stop doing this fucking anime voice I got going on. I'm finna damn near talk normal. Then how about I make some tea as well? Oh, I made her sound. I made her sound like a damn... <laughs> I mean, here's sound like a MILF librarian. The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki, Natsuki, mm. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrap tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to uh, Sayori. Natsuki marches to them. I'm fucking it all up. Natsuki marches over to the goddamn table tray in hand. Ah, right, you ready? Ta-da! <gasps> Natsuki lifts his foil off the tray to reveal a dozen uh white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. That's cold as hell, bitch. I ain't gonna lie. The whistles are drawn with ice skin. Ice skin? <laughs> the whistles are drawn with ice and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute. I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. Where'd her nasal go? I had no idea you're so good at uh you know what I give up. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sorry, grabs one. Then Monica. And then I'll follow. It's delicious. Damn, you should have told me that before. I would have did it. It's delicious. Like, I would have did it like that. Sorry, he talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking at the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... I've not heard this somewhere before. Made them for you or anything. Um, I thought you technically did. So I already said, well, maybe. But not not for you. Y you. <laughs> you dummy. Like, okay. I right, calm down. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Oh, man. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places the teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole set of tea in this classroom? Goddamn, what the fuck is wrong with you? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? No, I hate tea. Um, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. <laughs> That's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I mean, that, uh, you know, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least I enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow and smiles at me. Fuck you got going on. So what made you consider joining the literature club? Um, what's her name? Sayori. I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and so you seem pretty, uh, really happy here, so. That's okay, don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the literature club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Alright. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be the board member of any other major clubs. 
Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? <laughs> well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. Ooh, talk your shit. Feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. Can I tell y'all something real quick? Y'all know I went to the white people high school, right, bro? I joined the African American club just to feel some semblance of goddamn um 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 being re represented, bro. You know? So the year I joined, the fucking uh what you call the sponsor of the club just seemed like she she fucking despises of me for some reason. I may have already told this story. It didn't matter what the fuck I did, I couldn't get on this bitch right side for nothing. Um, she old as hell though, so maybe I shouldn't call her a bitch, but she was a bitch to me. I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, to make a long story short, bro, I was in the club. I performed for the club for the um. It was like a uh, I don't know what you call it, shit, like a club performance for the years, shit, whatever the fuck. I performed and I was talking to a whole bunch of people in the group, and I was like, man, you know, I think I want to be president next year. I think I want to be president of the club next year. And it just sparked me. It's funny that when I come to the group the very next year, the president is some Brazilian nigga. That shit, that shit never made no sense to me. Anyway, I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. And I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people have, eh, not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to starting something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Like, so let's do this shit, bitch. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it! Like, okay, get on my screen. You look like a fucking Tasmanian devil lizard. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls all interested in the same goal. Monica must have really worked hard to find these three. Maybe that's why they're all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, what kind of things do you like to read? Um, let me be honest, bro, I don't read at all. I used to read, when I was a kid, when I was trying to impress the girls in my class, I used to read these little, um, these little vampire books. As I got older, I really realized that them vampire books was just, uh, leg squeeze for them women and any women watching my video you know exactly what the fuck i'm talking about cross your legs and squeeze yeah a lot of them books were just fuel for that they were doing that while they were reading but i was trying to impress them by talking to them about the books that they was reading that's probably the last book that i read read and that, and that was all the way in sixth grade any other book after that i was forced to read by my fucking teachers and i had to write a paper on it so i, I don't really like reading more of the story considering how little i've read the past few years i don't really have a good way of answering that manga i mutter quietly to myself half joking natsuki's head suddenly perks up looks like she wants to say something but she keeps quiet bitch talk talk not much of a reader i guess well that can change fuck are you saying that's crazy so i've been trying this whole time to you get some breasts in your face and don't know how to act i spoke without thinking after seeing yuri's sad smile okay <sighs> anyway what about you yuri well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually no 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 my favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. Ugh. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. If I'm gonna read something, it's gonna be something like that. I ain't gonna lie. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse, uh, usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Uh, I read a horror book once on bro. I desperately grasp something that I can relate to at the minimal level just to make it seem like I, I'm, I'm somewhat here, bitch. Don't, don't leave me yet. <laughs> You're not out of my league yet. I'm trying to catch you, bring you back down to my level. Come here. At this rate, Yuri might as well have been having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think, 
or takes me to uh, what the fuck is that but if a story makes me think or takes me to another world then i really can't put it down surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world if only for a brief moment Ugh, i hate horror oh why is that well i just natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second never mind that's right you usually write about cute things don't you natsuki Wh what what gives you that idea you left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting look like you were working on a poem called don't say it out loud and give that back fine fine <laughs> your cupcakes your poems everything about you is just as cute as you are <clears throat> excuse me sayori siddles what the fuck is that word siddles sidles to behind asuki and puts her hands on her shoulders i'm not cute <laughs> oh my gosh bitch why are you throwing these damn tantrums ask you you write your own poems yo uh well i guess sometimes why do you care i think that's impressive why don't you share them sometime mm. <laughs> no I'm like bro not skill first her eyes you wouldn't like them uh not a very confident writer yet i understand how natsuki feels sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence the truest form of writing is to writing to oneself you must be willing to open up yourself to your readers exposing your vulnerabilities and showing it even the deep even the deepest parts of your heart i almost said regions that was gonna be a pause do you have writing experience too yuri Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough uh, to share hers. <clears throat> I guess it's the same for Yuri. Oh, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Eh? Natsuki and Yuri uh, look quizzically over at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way everyone is even. Uh, mm. <sighs> Yeah, let's do it! Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it would help us get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond at the club. Isn't that right? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, man. There's still one problem. What's that? Like, you didn't join? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I, but, I bluntly come across with the uh, fact that I, I, I didn't agree to none of this shit. I never said that I would join this club. Sorry may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um, I lose my train of thought, because them bitches just looked at me with the the meanest mug. Somebody said, that's not mean. Look at Natsuki over there. Somebody said, that's cute. That shit is not cute. What the fuck is you pouting for? All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. You think I give a fuck about any of these faces they making at me? I don't. But, but, I'm sorry. I thought, mm, oh my god, you all... I'm defenseless against these girls. Get a fucking spine, bro. Get a spine, bro. Come on. Come on. This nigga dick get hard and he don't know how to act. I fucking hate niggas. <laughs> I hate niggas, niggas. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? The same way you just did. You just... That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. See, this nigga dick run him again. Again. If you would just control that motherfucker, you'd be all right. All right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. You think they didn't notice that all they had to do was... <laughs> and, you, and, you, and you pussing? You pussing up, bitch? Come on. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Monica, I don't know. Monica looks skeptical a little bit. Oh, no, that's her, that's her fucking hair swoop. I thought that was an eyebrow going down. I thought that bitch was showing skepticism. Yes, I'm so happy. Like, Sorry wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. <laughs> Shit, get the fuck off me. Hey! You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. And that makes it official. Welcome to the literature club. Uh, thanks, I guess. All right, everyone. I think with that, we could officially end today's meeting on a good note. Every time I speak, like, like snot tries to flare up the back of my nose. And every time I breathe in, it pops and then I choke. Like, bro, get back. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. You know, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. You kind of that nigga. Oh! <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. Can I really impress the class? Uh, can I really impress the class star with my mediocre writing skills? 
I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. <laughs> Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, you know, since you're already here, like, you wanna walk home together? Come on. That's right, so Yuri never gonna walk home together anymore because she's always stayed at the school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! Alright. With that, the two of us depart the classroom and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day um, after school in a literature club? You're not even going to be worried about the literature. You're just worried about bitch putting breasts on your shoulders. Perhaps I had a chance to grow closer to one of these girls. See, that's what I'm talking about. Alright. I just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Can't no good fortune find you when you letting your dick lead you. That's how niggas get STDs. It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Um, I fuck with aura. Good shit. Destiny. Uh, excitement. Playground. Skipping. Uh, destiny. Contamination. Vanilla. Vacation. Misfortune. Dazzle, chocolate, nature, infinite. I like that one. Clumsy, adventure, disaster, empty, flea, pink, sunset, headphones, meager, play. I don't like any of these. Mm. Clumsy, adventure, disaster, empty, flea. What are you trying to say to me? I feel like somebody's trying to speak to me right now. You had a clumsy adventure. You had a clumsy adventure that turned into a disaster. You felt empty afterwards, you tried to fucking flee, and then a pink bitch came out of nowhere. No, 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 a pink sunset. Yep, 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 a pink sunset. With sun setting. Yep. And with your headphones on, you had some meager shit playing in your ears. So that's a terrible adventure, I hate it. Um, damn, which one of these do I like? None of them. Um, mm, adventure, fuck it. Kawaii, like, no. Um, determination, tenacious, analysis, nightgown, together, laugh, unending, heartbeat. Uh, um, mm, I hate that the, I hate that the purpose of me picking these words is to get cooch. It ain't about what I like. It's about what the bitch is like. I hate that about this. Anyway, um, which one of these do I like? Determination. Come on. Ambient. I think I like ambient. Yeah, I'm gonna look at ambient. Massacre. Massacre. Breathe. Cheeks. Inferno. Inferno. I fuck with that one. Hurt. Papa. Spend enough time during the poem mini game for the music to what? Hurt. Papa. Love. Peaceful. Strawberry. Whisper. Electricity. Heaven sent. You know, lazy and sadness. Um. Electricity. Hope. Uncontrollable. Hair. Melancholy. Flying. Starscape. Games. Beauty. Prayer. Eternity. Uh, melancholy. Giggle. Summer. Doki Doki. Sweet. Candy. Swimsuit. Portrait. Disoriented. Blanket. Disarray. Uh, where did all the cool words go? I don't like none of these. These mean the same shit, don't they? Um. Mm. <sighs> Let's go, summer. Vivacious imagination, imagination easily. Shopping, music, time, disown, boop, passion. Entropy, romance, marshmallow, rose, rose, unrestrained, alone, atone, treasure, forgive, death, incapable, wonderful, infallible, explode, unrestrained, existence, secretive, skirt, feather, landscape, marriage, ribbon, peace, insight, tragedy, insight, intellectual, awesome, lucky, valentine, comfort, dream, wrath, fickle, extraordinary, hopeless, unstable, Oh my gosh. Yeah, these books are telling me a story. I don't like that. 
Hopeless Unstable, Cheer Whistle, Cute Sparkle, Memories Cry, Universe, Rain Cloud, Calm, Bouncy Holiday, Jumpy Defeat, Mouse Sugar, <laughs> Fireflies and Judgment. Um. Mm. judgment smile horror sing lust shiny anger vibrant i think i like vibrant pout incongruent raindrops twirl waterfall puppy promise dark rainbow depression um bro <laughs> fuck it dark frightening pleasure lollipop vivid variance I don't know why I like variants. I like that one though. Hi again. All right, we back. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> that bitch Sayori already wouldn't let me. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I kept my word. Well, I'm back at the Literacy Club. I was the last one to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise. I hope this isn't too overwhelming for uh, of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it? Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. Ain't you the one that's scared to show your poem while she's talking about a custom? You're not accustomed to anything while you're even in this club. You need to calm down. Sorry told me you didn't even, um, mm, this is the wrong person. Sorry told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you just plan to come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. <laughs> Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for somebody who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Damn, she just fried your stupid ass. You better get up. You better get off my dick. <laughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature, is it not? Why are you screaming that? Why are you de why are you declaring it? And <laughs> like, are you George Jefferson? <laughs> I don't even know who George Jefferson is, bitch. Swiftly defeat. Y'all know, just real quick. Y'all can call me an idiot in the comments, but I'm, I'm gonna say this before you call me an idiot. Just because in terms of intelligence and knowledge, I don't value what you value, doesn't mean that I'm dumb. It just means that we smart in different categories. Anyway, I remember at work years ago, these people were playing, are you smarter than a fifth grader with me? And they asked me who the fucking first president is. I don't fucking know. And they answered it that day, and I still don't fucking know. I don't fucking care. I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna lie, somebody said that's the most dumb shit you could've said on this channel, I'm finna unsubscribe behind that shit. I don't care, bro, I, 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 I just don't. If you ask me some more shit about black history, I'm probably not gonna know no names, but I'm gonna know movements, I'm gonna know residual effects, and I'm gonna know, I'm gonna know, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna know more shit like that, that has a direct effect on what the fuck we do today. Don't ask me nothing about nobody name, please don't, I don't, I, I, I do not remember names like that, I know, I know movements. I know events. I know shit like that. But do not ask me nobody name because I'm not going to know. All right. Don't worry, guys. He always gives it. He always. He always. I got like a lisp. He always gives it his best when he's um having fun. Damn, I got a lisp. It was going to be like, he always get it. Like, I can't help it. He helps me with my busy work without even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Do I actually do any of those? I guess I do. Sorry, that's because your room is so fucking dirty, it's distracting me. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you know that warning in the beginning about, like, depression and all that extra shit? Sayori? Like, I don't know. You two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be just a little jealous, like, how come? You and Juan could be good friends, too. <laughs> um, Sayori. <coughs> Bro, I'm trying to tell y'all, that's not trying to take me out. Hmm? Hmm. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. She's not oblivious, she know what the fuck she just did. Oh, oh, you even brought you something today, you know? Wait, wait, Sayori, wait. Uh, me? Mm, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What the fuck is it like? <laughs> Never mind. Sorry made it sound like it's a big deal when it's really not. Uh, 
Mm, what do I do? Huh? I'm sorry, Yuri. I, I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wouldn't expect nothing in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise, bro. Don't trip on it. It'll make me happy no matter what. <laughs> is, is that so? Yeah, I'm not gonna make a big deal if you don't want me to be. What? Yeah, I ain't gonna make a big deal if you don't want me to, bro. Alright. Well, here. He reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read. So it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know... Why did I read that like that? And we could, you know... Discuss it if... If you want it. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? I feel like a hentai pro tag, bro. Come on. She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. Like that over-enthusiastic ass bullshit. You know you're not gonna go home and read this, for real. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. So you and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her, uh, I can't help but notice her intense expression. Like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Alright. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little more. But at the same time, I feel bad for distracting her from her reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. Looks like the same book she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the very first few pages. Ah. Crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I muttered this since and I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. <laughs> but I'm rereading a bit of this, so. That's the book you gave me, right? Yeah. I want to reread some of it, you know, before we talked about it. Not for any particular reason, apparently. I I guess I... Alright, maybe. My bad. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Uh... Well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... Uh, that's not what I meant. I mean... I just happened to buy two of them. Uh, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon, don't even worry about it. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down, though. Uh. It's a very engaging and relatable story. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well, mm, if I told you, to probably spoil it. Yuri closes the book and scares her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of uh, Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright. I just want to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? You made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. When did she make it seem like a nice story? See, that was just your dick thinking for you. <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing? Nah, it ain't that. I mean, I could definitely enjoy those kind of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, JJK is damn near one of those stories. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri's into these things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that these kind of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals and their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one, letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, chill, bro. You ain't you doing too much right now. Chill, bro. I ain't lost engines and I'm still listening, bitch. What the fuck is wrong with you? Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know I have this problem. 
when I let things like books and writings fill my thoughts. I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry, bro. It just means you're passionate about reading. The least I could do is listen. It's a literature club, I thought. Ah, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You, you don't have to! <laughs> what you said, bro? Like, chill. Just a moment ago, you were saying you was looking forward to me reading it. Like, what's going on? <laughs> Just let me get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip it to the seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah. You sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is reading in company with somebody else. I see. Well, just let me know if I end up distracting you or something. Alright, alright. Alright, bro. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I could feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. It's just distracting. But the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri's in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. I like she's reading from my book instead. S sorry I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? Like, are you Canadian? <laughs> I, I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> yeah, this should work, right? I slam my desk until it's up against Yuri's there hold my book more between the two of them. <sighs> I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right arm to hold the book open. Uh, I guess this kind of makes it difficult to turn the page, like I can't move my shit. Here. Okay. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Okay. Ah. Uh, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn the page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I could feel the warmth of Yuri's face. She's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Huh? To turn the page? Oh, shit. I ain't even been reading, bitch. My dick been getting hard. <laughs> I think I got distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and her eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. <sighs> That's okay. You're not used to reading, um... Uh, you're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I could do. Since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, thank you for that. We could tell you read, yeah. You're no longer asking me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page for me, so I turn it by my own volition. So you're not even reading. <laughs> so you're not even reading. Alright. We continue the first chapter in silence. Either so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. This is... <laughs> this is why I be saying, like... Somebody go call me insecure, but, like, this is why I be saying... A lot of these niggas, bro, I don't know. Y'all be trying to play it off like y'all friends with these girls. Y'all know y'all trying to crack, bro. Quit playing in their face, bro. Quit playing in their face. <sighs> My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it in her own thumb. Hey, Yuri... This might be a silly thought, but the main character the um story reminds me of you a little bit. The main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways, but she also second get uh she also second guesses a lot of the shit. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I could see into your head or something, but shit, they kind of reminiscent of your mannerisms. I I see. You remain silent for a moment. But that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, that's so embarrassing that you think that, honestly. Wait, wait! I ain't mean it in a bad way or nothing. Shit! <laughs> Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that shit. <sighs> I guess I meant this more, more on the cute side, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, what are you saying all of a sudden? It's getting fucking hot in here, like... I, all right, everyone. <laughs> Think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. 
We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah. Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. Sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, no, nah, it ain't. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on the top of my thumb. Ouch. Alright. Guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Would you prefer I only read it with you? Um, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Huh. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read what you out there picks up, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the, fish, uh, the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up. I make a middle note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Oh my gosh, who do you think I am? <laughs> Knowing me, me personally, I probably would have forgot. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. Couldn't really find much inspiration since I'd never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you sign, uh, find someone to share it with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf from a spiral notebook. <laughs> On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well. Reaching into their bags, I do the same myself. Wish I had voice acting. Who should I show my poem to first? The homie? Like, what are you talking about? What are you really talking? I'm definitely most comfortable sharing it with Sayori first. She's my good friend after all. Hmm. This is a good poem, Juan. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who'll be writing poems in his spare time? No. <laughs> I guess you're right. But that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously. Or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy that you just wrote one. It reminds me, um... It just reminds me of how you're really part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Uh... Well, duh. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise, you know what I'm saying? See? It's like I said that before, Juan. What? Wait, my bad. It's like I said before. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people? It is selfish. It is selfish. And I'm gonna tell you why it's selfish. He only doing it because his dick hard. He only doing it because he want to put it in somebody. That's the only reason he's doing it. It's selfish. It's selfish. Y'all gotta understand. Y'all gotta understand. People pleasing is selfish. People pleasing is selfish. People pleasing is selfish. You're not doing it because you want to try something new. You're doing it because you want to get the favor of somebody else. You're not really interested in the shit that you're doing. You're only doing this. You're only being dishonest with yourself and the person because you want them to think, oh, we might have something in common. You know what? I fuck with you or, or or you know what we could be friends we value the same shit whole time no you don't whole time no you don't you're just doing that to get the favor selfish it's bullshit don't do it anyway trying new things like this for other people that's something that only really good people do no it's not no it's not no it's not really good people would be honest straight up front hey you know what i'm saying i don't fuck with literature you know what i'm saying i don't fuck with books but if you want me in this club just so you can have some company i'll participate but that's just because you my nigga. But I'm going to tell you right now. I don't fuck with this shit. I don't like writing. I don't like reading. But if you want a friend, if you want a friend here with you, fuck it. I'm here with you. You feel me? That's more honest than what the fuck. All right. All right. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure that you have lots of fun here, okay? That would be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! Now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. Alright. Dear Sunshine, The way you glow through my blinds in the morning, It makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed. Making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad, I want breakfast. Damn, mother got, got beef with the sun? Hold on. Sayori. This is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? N no, just, just a little bit. 
You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. Hold on, y'all. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. Yes, the fuck you can. It just depends on what type of yes or no question. Like, in what context, bitch. I don't know. Sometimes I don't like my character. Anyway, I forgot to do it last night. So, you know. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Yeah, you did. I fuck with it. I ain't even say it was a bad poem. It came out nice. Or, how should I put it? Sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I mean, eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school, that's probably why she was late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast. And get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this is so much fun. Monica's the best. Ah, uh, yeah. But next time I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. No, oh, bro. Who should I show my poem to next? Uh... I guess Yuri. They be said, ooh. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. <laughs> huh? What was that? Hmm? Did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. I... Uh... He's gonna hate me. I shouldn't know that she's thinking that. Um... You really didn't do anything wrong. Huh? That's... I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. Good, there you go. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, uh... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her fingers along the words in the poem as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that you that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable... Bro, what are you talking about? You are not just doing all of this. Oh my god. Where did all my props go? You got scared of giving me props, so you you combing through my shit again, bro? I think the most noticeable uh, the, no, uh, the most noticeable thing I recognize in a new writer is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that they both uh, is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once she refines her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammer is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing, even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example, and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. That's keeping me a little biased though. Biased? How? Um... Well... Never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine, bro. Like, oh my god, like. <laughs> bitches gossip. Niggas gossip. That's what humans do. <laughs> I'm not sure if you is apologizing to ourselves and me and us both, or all three. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which in itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? All right, ghost under the light, the tendrils of my, what? The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing? Batting? What is that word? B-A-T-H-I-N-G? Bathing? Is that how you spell bathing? Why do I feel like bathing is with an E? That's because bathe is with an E. Um, it must be this one. The last remaining sheet light to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. Huh? Oh, because you're a ghost. <laughs> you're a ghost. Are, are you a ghost? Huh? Wait. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow bathing. It must be this one. 
the last remaining sheet light to have withstood the test of time. Street light. The last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe calm, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers, I flicker back. Ghost under the light? What does this mean? Like, are you ghost of the past? Is that what this means? Because if the light represents the past, you a ghost under the light ghosts of the past like ghosts under the past like i don't know i'm reaching just trying to understand what you're talking about i guess you're gonna tell me right <laughs> i'm sorry i have such terrible handwriting it's not that it's terrible it's just cursive what i wasn't thinking that at all but it took you a long time to read oh well i just don't read script very often i actually think your handwriting is pretty eh that's a relief also i like the poem even though it's short, it's really, it's really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I used to write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. This is our first time sharing. I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Juan. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poems often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in the world. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only symbolically being compared to a ghost. Lingering in the last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. I was right on the I was right on the dot. <laughs> and soon to be left with nothing. Oh bro. That's a more solemn way of putting it. That's what I meant by ghost of the past. You know how people be saying that should be haunting them? I mean, yeah, I'm, I knew what I was talking about, bitch. Somebody said you're reaching, you've been reaching, and it didn't, it didn't add up to what she's saying. You know, in my head it did. Maybe I'm just not good at expressing it. I hadn't even thought of that. I did. That's impressive, huh? It's nothing really. Yours is impressive too. So, nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. <sighs> you know. I was really nervous about doing all of this but in the end i enjoyed it i'm gonna keep doing my best for you Juan. oh okay me too for sure you're in a little boat all right uh, i don't fuck with not sleeping i'm gonna go i'm gonna go tell her i guess let me see huh hmm? well if you're not gonna take this club seriously then go home see i should have just went to monica i should have just went to monica you fucking stink what Harsh. What you expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put in effort. We all start somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I would like to read it. Wait, no, no. If you still, if you still proud of the first poem that you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Painful to think about? Ugh. Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. Fair enough. What's each day on, I guess? Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race. That line just pissed me off. I don't even know why. Why wouldn't you just say horses can run? Or gallop. What the fuck are you talking about race? <laughs> Sorry. Owls can seek. Alright. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. Okay. You trying me. And it ain't going the way you think it should. That shit did not hit. Yeah, I told you that you weren't going to like it. I'm, I'm glad you know. I like it. No, I don't. What? Just be honest. I'm not. Why are you so convinced that I would like it? <laughs> Sorry, I changed that word on purpose. My bad, y'all. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because. Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the whole point of poems, uh, poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Then tell me what the message was. Tell me what the message was right now. People can try and that's it? <laughs> like, bro... 
Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. It didn't hit me hard. That's the point. I just read the... You, you just said it all right there. You could take all of those fucking six lines before, delete that shit, and I would still get the point. Like, no, it didn't hit me hard. Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. All right. <sighs> but the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. Helps bring out the feeling. And you know what? This is the cool thing about art. It's literally to each day on, bro, because I don't fuck with it. I didn't like it at all. It went fuck me. <laughs> I got it. People could try it. That's about it. No, bro, just try. Just do your thing. That's all you got to do, bro. <laughs> all that shit before? Like, come on. What are you talking about? So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. Glad you learned something. Didn't you expect that from the youngest one? Uh, oh, sorry. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from him. <laughs> All right, good for her then. Okay. Hey! Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, alright? Alright, I keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's just that sort of barrier we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, I guess that's true. I had mine to come up on. Mm-hmm. Great job, Juan. I was going to say, uh, sorry. I was going ooh in my head while I'm reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why. I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's, uh, it's easy for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way it always counts when I put some effort in. This nigga stole my, this nigga stole my mojo. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know, that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? I said that wrong. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. I guess me and Yuri got that in common. I don't, I don't know. It's very challenging to write like that effectively. Both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all of the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. Never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by new, uh, learn by trying new things. Oh man, I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little biased towards their own kind of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> Ha! <laughs> anyway, you want me on poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims not to be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in the wall. <laughs> it couldn't have been me. You start this shit out with an instigation. Alright. It couldn't have been me. See? The direction the sp uh, spackle protrudes? Yeah. The spackle. What the fuck is a spackle? See, the direction the um, spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend. I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No! What the fuck? No! I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. Huh? But it's too late. My retinas already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image it's just a little hole it wasn't too bright it was too deep stretching forever into everything a hole of infinite choices i realize now that i wasn't looking in i was looking out and he on the other side was looking in uh wait a minute it couldn't have been me 
the direction the spackle protrudes a noisy neighbor an angry boyfriend i'll never know i wasn't home i peer inside for a clue no i can't see i reel blind like a film left out in the sun but it's too late my retinas already scorched with a permanent copy a copy of the meaningless image it's just a little hole it wasn't too bright it was too deep searching forever into everything a hole of infinite choices i realize now that i wasn't looking in i was looking out and he on the other side was looking in um Is this the Truman Show? Like, what's going on? Like, who who's looking in? God? Like, what are you looking out into? The universe? What is happening? I don't know, Monica. So, what do you think? You and Yuri got some creepy-ass poems. And, <laughs> like, hmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Shit, that's okay. Yeah, that kind of style is getting pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it could be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put this. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Damn. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. That's so true, bro. That's so true. I'll be trying to write a few stories. You know what I'm saying? I, I am... Uh, fuck it, I'm gonna just say it, bro. I've been writing a story for like, I want to say like three years now. It's gonna come out eventually, bro. It's gonna come out eventually. Y'all gonna fuck with it. Y'all gonna fuck Well I don't know If, if y'all fuck with superheroes Y'all gonna fuck with it But if y'all know me Y'all know it's much deeper Than superheroes But I'm not gonna say Nothing else about it But yeah I'm writing a story And she just, she just talked that shit With that one Another way to think about it Is this If you keep your pen In the same spot for too long You'll just get a big Dark puddle of ink So just move your hand And go with the flow That's my advice for today I like it Thanks for listening I like that advice Whew. Guess that's everyone I glance around the room. I was a little more stressful than I anticipated. This is if everyone is judging me for my uh, mediocre writing skills. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. <sighs> I guess that's what I end up getting myself into. Across the room, so Yuri and Monica are pretty happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly ex uh, exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyes brought, uh... Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. <laughs> Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. Guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Huh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with no something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. <laughs> Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Juan did, too. So based on that, I'll gladly give some uh, you some of my own. Fuck it. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless, I f uh, unless of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. <clears throat> and Juan liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Nutsky suddenly stands up. Oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. I don't have nothing else to say about Natsuki. I don't got nothing else to say. That's not what I... Uh, you... You're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Wanda appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. 
huh how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more i didn't um i didn't appreciate none of your advice actually neither one of y'all what did you even tell me you didn't even give me advice she just broke my shit down she was like bitch you're new to this get right what did Natsuki even say to me I, I didn't i don't even remember neither one of y'all advice did sayori even say anything to me i'm an idiot i just remembered monica's advice that's the shit that stuck with me are you that full of yourself i no if i was full of myself i would deliberately go out of my way to make everything i do overly cutesy Ugh. um is everyone okay well you know what i was the one who whoa um Natsuki! Uh, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! Damn, both of these NPCs just got mad at another NPC? Crazy, it being your own people. I don't like fighting, guys! Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they noticed I was standing there. Come on! She's just she's trying to make me look bad. Sorry, that was sharp as fuck in y'all ears. Sorry. She's trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it! If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective. Okay. Why can't y'all just accept that people are different? Why the fuck you gotta force your shit on somebody else? Just leave it like Natsuki. Treat her shit like how you treat mine. You don't fuck with it, but it was okay. You know what I'm saying? Vice versa. Like, it's simple. Why y'all arguing? Don't let no dick get in between you bitches. Y'all was cool before this. Um, what's the point in making all your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out to the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Let me explain that to her. Wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning uh, the most effectively. Avoiding them is only... Uh, no, no. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right? Alright. Um... Well... Uh, how did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing, but whomever I agree with will probably think more highly of me. So of course, that's gonna be help me Sayori. Help me Sayori. Natsuki. Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead I turn to Yuri. Yuri. Okay. But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori. Eh? Yeah. Everyone's fighting. Uh, everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can it tell you keep fighting when you're making your friend feel like this? One, well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I, I agree. It's unfair to uh, if it's, it's unfair for uh, no, sorry, it's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. She would never. <laughs> Just all I did was bring Sayori into the middle of this. <laughs> I was asking for Sayori to get me the fuck up out of here, not me bring her into it. All right, it's your immaturity that's made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why. Exactly why nobody likes. Stop! Natsuki. <laughs> Yuri. You guys are my friends. I, I just want everyone to get along and be happy. Shut the fuck up, please. My friends are wonderful people. And I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems. They're amazing because they can use many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? But because well also, Nesky's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. Um okay. All right. <laughs> uh, Sayori. Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Nesky sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I can even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing to me. <laughs> nah, it's not like I could blame you. I wasn't able to say nothing either. Well, I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. She's not an airhead. <laughs> she's not. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. You count on me. 
Monica smells sweetly in me, causing my stomach to nod. Such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. <laughs> okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It's a lot of fun. Well, I say it was worth it. It was all right. Well, mostly. Juan, how about you? Yeah, I said the same. It's anything for everybody to, you know, talk to the, talk to each other about what they think about themselves. You know, because you get your personality out on that paper. You get your vibe out on that paper. You put your energy in that pen and you put it on paper, bitch. So it was, it was nice to see what everybody what everybody's soul looks like on in words, bitch. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. Mm. I think to myself. I did learn a little more about the kind of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I could do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Why don't you want to impress your fucking self? Yeah. Ready to walk home? Come on, let's go. <laughs> Sorry, beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayu and I have spent this much time together. Can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Huh? What do you mean? You know, between Shorty and him. Does that kind of thing happen all the time? Hell no. Nah. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. This one's your opinion, that's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. Whew. You know, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think that seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> this is Sayori still hasn't caught on to the situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? This nigga... This, come on, bro, like... You know what I'm saying? Like... Come on, bro. You, you you know what I'm saying. I'm not tripping, right? Like, my gosh. We'll just have to see what happens in the future. Uh, yep. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her. But it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. This character does not fuck with Sayori for real. Let's do this. Horny bitch. All right. Doki Doki, shopping, vertigo, kitty, tragedy, skirt, sparkle, imagination, heartbeat, unrestrained, imagination, tenacious, horror, sunset, fireworks, pleasure, fickle, rose, anger, explode, play, explode, embrace, bed, silly, awesome, crimson, landscape, happiness, dazzle, amazing, uncontrollable. Hmm. Don't really like none of these. I'll go embrace. Ambient. I think I like ambient. Yeah, I like ambient. Variance, rain cloud, philosophy, excitement. Uh, cheeks, defeat, cry, family, childhood, struggle, sadness, clouds, inferno. Hope, contamination, shame, pain, playground, vibrant. Beauty, adventure, uh, adventure. Giggle, sugar, secretive, bouncy. Uh, bouncy. Treasure, dream, analysis, infinite. Existence. Treasure your dreams, analyze them infinitely. Or you'll have a misfortune. <laughs> you'll have misfortune. The sensation when you nibble hair um, is annoying, like a whistle existence. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what that meant. Let me see. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Mm. It's between infinite and existence. I think I like infinite. Marriage, entropy, disaster, bunny, romance, agonizing, anxiety, waterfall, uncanny, bubbles. I don't know what the fuck entropy means, so. Won't be clicking that one. I'll go romance. Extraordinary. Yeah. Unrequited. Promise. Together. I like that one. 
Jump shiny socks, tears, headphones, flower, cheer, prayer, incongruent. Okay. Don't like none of these. Good shiny. Melancholy, disarray, nightgown, aura, aura. Cage, forgive, grief, sing, games, friends, parfait, milk, insight, insight. Destiny, flee, peaceful, empty, melody, sticky, <laughs> vivacious. Um. Kiss, Valentine, dude. Kiss, Valentine, comfort, bliss, massacre. Um. Loud, dark, pure joy, starscape, universe. Swimsuit, fluffy, journey, color, unending, judgment, summer, intellectual. Yep. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. What up, Sayori? Uh, looks like you're in a good mood today. I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty good simple uh that's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. I mean you're a friend, ain't you? But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, kinda hungry. You coming to get a snack? No thanks. Why? Huh? That that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? <laughs> oh, okay, I get it. Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. Just want to look at it. Ah. Sayori so nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill on the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I could see right through you. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. You probably did this like 10,000 times. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before you came to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted to make an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I will lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always fucking hungry. And so there only leaves one more option. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. <laughs> if you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Damn. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face was in the book as always. <laughs> I wasn't listening or anything. I was just something in my book. Yuri. Tell him why let me borrow some money, bro. Tell the nigga let me some money, bro. That's... Don't get me involved like that. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your, su uh, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Mm. Uh, did I just... I didn't mean it like that. Got a little too absorbed in my book. <laughs> okay. Uh. Ha! What are you like when you speak your mind, Yuri? It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That. Still, coming from you, Sayori. Guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Yeah! <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she's bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had the chick not sick into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that. Damn. <laughs> Out of nowhere, something smacks her ear in the face and uh, tumbles onto the desk. Whoa. Ah. The fuck was that? Huh? A, a cookie. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sorry, glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. Then it was totally worth seeing your reaction. Natsuki! So nice of you! I'm so happy! Sorry he hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it, dude. I'm hungry, little nigga. Sorry, ra uh, rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. <laughs> this is so good. So tasty. Okay. Mm. Um, are you good? Do I need to pat you on the back? Oh, you bit your tongue. Damn. 
<laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie, bro. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, it looks really good, too. Get your hungry ass out my plate, bro. Move. Can I try it? Jeez. Vegas can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Oh my god, thank you. All right, bro. Sorry gets out the seat and goes behind the Suki, then wraps her arms around her. <laughs> Jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in here. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off her. I knew she was going to do that. Oh, <laughs> bro, I knew she was going to do that. <laughs> Sorry suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. You're in our lap as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes, bro. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Uh, Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. When you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I ain't heard shit neither. Hmm. It's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. It's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... Ta -ha! I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me! Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be, I didn't mean to be late. Hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically... Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, never mind that. Who held you up anyway? Uh... My last period today was study hall. To be honest, I just kind of lost track of time. Huh. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would, have had, you, would have, you would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it. I, should, I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I just kind of started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. It's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. The fuck you looking at me for? <laughs> like, what did I do? Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down. Monica smiles sweetly. Where the fuck did everybody just go? Oh, that nigga directed all of his attention to her. That nigga said, <laughs> like, bro, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Shit, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It's like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished the entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Mm. Man. It's like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down in the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read the book, um, read some of the book Yuri gave me. I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I'll close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. I'm probably going to seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing it to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Huh? What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we could do things like speak to their creative mind. Oh, no, we can do things that speak to their creative mind. Some shit like that. What's this? Sorry, he's taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Hmm, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? <laughs> what kind? Don't don't talk to her about nothing about food. Uh, well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! Ha, <laughs> good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Damn, you right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes, bro. That shit work out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it? Cupcake speaks to my creative tummy. Uh, cupcakes it is, then. I'm hungry. 
Uh, anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I found myself smiling. In the end, Sayuri is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayuri could put her mind to things and make it come to, uh, come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Damn! <laughs> I open my eyes to see Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This is the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have the less time for anime. Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know? You need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah, I know. I know! You're always looking out for me, Sayori. Yeah. That's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You still oversleeping every day, ain't you? Um, not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week you been, uh, you got up on time, bro? That's... It's a secret. Come on, bro. You ain't fooling me. Come on. Just give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori. It's written all over you. Huh? Sorry, glances around us, so. How's it written all over me? Okay, now you want to play like you a fool? Now you want to play like... Okay. You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking all out over here. Ah! I run my fingertips down the side of so you're here trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need to brush this. My hair's just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. It's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's two faces, two face standing on your collar right there. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But nobody would even notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey, you meanie. You don't even keep your blazer button up. I swear I noticed that, bro. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? My gosh, dude. Huh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button up her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Stop touching on her. Whoa! <laughs> this is so funny. What is? Well... I was just thinking about how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Huh? Don't say that. You make me feel weird about it. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Ain't you? Um, I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. That bitch is <laughs> Why is this so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. Yeah. <sighs> If you ever buttoned it, you have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? <laughs> okay. Don't say that out loud. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so. Uh. I just feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that. What are you talking about? But it's so stuffy. Ugh. It's not worth it at all. Sorry, hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. All right. Phew. That's so much better. Sorry, puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, I won't get a boyfriend, right? So I read that with no enthusiasm. So if I keep it unbuttoned, I won't get a boyfriend, right? So I if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? Sorry. The fuck kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend. Then he wouldn't let you do things like that. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Huh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. So, uh, guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are taking care of ourselves. Sorry, bro. I gotta talk about a snot again. I'm getting attacked right now. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Aw, oh, but I was joking that time. And it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. 
Alright, everyone. Huh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Man, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I feel this unenthusiastic, but Sayori still tries a way to retrieve her poem. Alright. Sayori, bro, that's the gangster. That's the, that's the homie right there. You tweaking. Mm. My goodness. This is so good. Huh? I love it. Especially after yesterday's poem. Uh, you're too honest sometimes, Sayori. <laughs> no, but really. I want to put this one on my wall. Can I? Sayori. You must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. Honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive on this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Huh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. <laughs> okay. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Pause. But I said the same shit earlier. When I was like, you put your energy on that pen and you put it on that paper. I said the same shit. She talking that shit. Sorry hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> I'm not very good at figuring out po uh, figuring out if poems are good or bad. That's why I just go by my heart. And if it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. I, I think it is. I, I think it is, dick. Then again, I guess convincing... Um, sorry. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing this is in the first place. Oh, uh, sorry. I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah. Me neither. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Huh? Well, I don't even know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. She knows exactly what I mean. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you like it's something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. Sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, sad poem can give you the rain cloud, uh, can get a rain cloud, mm, get a rain cloud a little hug. And make a nice happy rainbow. Ugh. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. It is? I was just getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks. Mm, my bad, y'all. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? All right. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a... Huh? Huh? I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like, bundle, like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle and keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. Happy thoughts in a bottle, all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends. Each bottle, a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night and night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottle. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets, hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done. I open up and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Did they want my bottles that much? I frantically put all of them from the shelf, uh, pull all of them from the shelf one after another, holding them out to each and every friend each and every bottle but every time i let one go it shatters against the tile between my feet uh, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor they were supposed to be my friends my friends who aren't smiling they're all shouting pleading something but all i hear is echo inside my head i pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar it's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. 
little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. So you took out all your sunshine, put it in a bottle. You put so much sunshine in so many bottles that in the end, your fucking head is hollow and all you hear is echo. So there's no more sunshine in your head. Moral of the story is you're losing it. Mm. Um, can we talk to her about this? Holy shit. Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was, in, uh, I was meant to express myself this way. You didn't help me understand my own feelings a little better. Writing is like magic. You got pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing till I die. All right, now, don't get ahead of yourself. Sorry's already had a had of uh, getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. It'd be like that for real. I wonder if this is one of those times. Seeing the passion in her eyes make it hard for me to be pessimistic. God, okay. What's up? How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. Happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Wanna share what you wrote for today? Yup, here you go. Alright. Alright. I like this one. Makes me think of something Sayori would like. I sure gave it to her. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had uh, those sort of things in common. Ah, uh, well, we may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It seems like you two really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it end up being more similar than you think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when I read your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading it into it too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh man, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayuri's writing his uh kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions, like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone uh, so happy could enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. You shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit neither. But anyway, you wanna read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. Okay, starting it out crazy. Save me, the colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a piece of crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Okay. Maybe it's just because I'll be, you know, editing a lot. RGB. Alright. Noise. That's like how grainy your camera kind of looks. Waveforms. Sine, cosine, tangent. And then the bitch ended off with load me. The code is speaking. The code is speaking. The code is speaking to me. The code is speaking to me. The code is speaking to me and I don't like it. I don't know. Save me and then load me. What if I cannot hmm. save me, load me? The code is speaking to me. Hold on. Hold on. Hmm. 
confused if you want. Um. I was okay. I was just trying something. I was just trying some. It said save me, load me, bro. I don't know. All right, nothing happened. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's kind of, mm. you know, what's kind of fucked up about this. If if the code is speaking, the code is speaking to another code because. My character is a code in itself. Nah, this is crazy. Are you speaking to code? Are you speaking to code me? You have to be speaking to code me. But save me, load me. Code me don't know how to fucking save and load you, dude. Why are you talking to me? First this Sayori with that damn depression note. She, she emptied all the happiness out of her fucking head. So she's fucking losing it. And now this motherfucker talking about save me, load me, RGB. Yeah, okay. All right. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how you uh, the space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. That's what I'm saying. Like, what noise? It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem about isn't the, isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Uh, that don't make no sense. But anyway, um, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. And when something they can expect it might happen. Uh, yeah. No, like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What you mean, what are you even talking about? You... So, she, okay, so, okay. There's, there's two things going on. Either Monica is being taken over, or Monica is taking over. I don't fucking know. Either either she's being taken over or she's taking over. I don't fucking know. But the bitch just told me to save the game immediately after I just read a poem about saving and loading. I tried to save and load. So maybe that's why she's saying that shit. Maybe I glitched the game. I don't know. I might have glitched it. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, what am I even talking about? Like, <laughs> that's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. And you know she's talking to me and not him because... She's doing that shit like an infomercial. Okay. Y'all know I don't fuck with Natsuki. <laughs> this shit ain't even about who I fuck with no more. Monica's creeping me out. Let's see what you've written for today. Mm. This is pretty good. Were you influenced by seeing everyone else's writing styles yesterday? I guess you could say that. I was also a bit surprised at how differently everyone writes. So I respect you for trying new things. You don't need to be afraid of a uh, to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like tuning a bunch of gears or turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see in here. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. It's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you would like to read it. Of course. It's the poem you wrote for today. Yeah, yeah. Hand me that goddamn baby. All right, let's see if she on some creepy shit. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon and urge. Uh, the, the moon increments, what? The moon increments its phase. Huh? Is that what that says? The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. Uh, the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft 
the raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cut knife, the raccoon shows me excite excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian. Pavlov. The conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. You're a raccoon? Okay. My attention was caught by the scattering of a raccoon outside of my window. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon is fed, that is fed will always come back for more. Oh my gosh, is this about addiction? Is the is the raccoon symbolizing addiction? Is that what this is about? Um cuz bread curiosity but also guilty snack raccoon instead of saying raccoon at the end you said yourself uh, this one i think this one is about addiction what the fuck um i was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's i can see that it's a lot more metaphorical I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem's about. I think it's about addiction, but I guess she'll tell us. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using a poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions to them. And if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? B because they're embarrassing. People would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that one? Um, yeah, I guess I do. Maybe I read that, maybe I read that poem wrong. It was, it's, it's, I don't know, maybe it was just, I don't know, it was just giving addiction. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other, um, respect each other in our individualities. Facts, facts. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I probably would hate myself. I might be writing a little bit now, but I'm glad you're a good listener. All right, come on, Natsuki. Hmm. Well, I can admit that it's better than the last one. It's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. That's good. Come to think of it. Kind of reminds me of Sayuri, uh, Sayuri's poem from yesterday. You think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayuri has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know. Honestly, how could someone so uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around dead weight. Damn. That's what I'm saying about her. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she probably would just fly away like letting go of a balloon. That's fucked up. It's fucked up. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. Maybe the <laughs> maybe my character knows Sayori got something going on. He just don't know. No, like I don't know. You could say that we could take uh, you could say we take each other in our own, take care of each other in our own way. Sorry, whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my bone. Here, Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me. Um, she helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried to not let her touch me. She likes spiders. So her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. One of her friends start to like spiders too. That's why I'm not friends with her. Doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. Doesn't matter if she keeps it private. Doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. Mm. This could be seen a lot of different ways. 
replace spiders with literally everything else like <laughs> like replace the word spiders with <laughs> black people like oh my gosh you know what i'm saying or literally any other like come on this could be a lot of things like not bad right no nah, i fuck with this one i like this one more than the other one yesterday's was way too short i was just warming up i hope you didn't think that was the best i could do hell no nah. anyway the message is pretty straightforward in this one i thought i have to explain it sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies it helps people realize how stupid they're being like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk right do you know people like that of course it's about how everyone thinks my that doesn't matter it can be about anything i wrote it to be easy to relate to you did and uh, you know what i gotta give you a props for that because like i said if you take spiders and place that place literally anything else in that position it turns into that yep everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure uh this feels like a shot at yuri but i don't know something that you're afraid people will find out and then and that they make fun of you or think less of you but that just makes people stupid who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy i think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things uh maybe not a shot no more yuri wrote about something similar today right 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 on bro huh you just say yuri yeah she said her poem was about unusual hobbies of hers i didn't really get it but she said something similar to you that people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things really well i mean yours pretty weird so i wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies not that there's anything wrong with that uh it's not like i would judge her or anything <laughs> she has trouble finding words i guess i should try not to be so mean to her she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff i mean i always hate people who make me feel insecure you made me feel insecure yesterday but the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned a lesson well i would say so even if her writing style is really different i'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem it's what i do best after all i don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it like conveying emotions is important but i want to make people think not just feel remember that i'm gonna write a poem um i'm gonna write a good i'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow so look forward to it for sure okay everyone we're all done reading each other's poem right now um yes miss save me load me i don't know what you got going on but i have something extra planned so if everyone could just come sit at the front of the classroom is this about the festival well sort of <sighs> do we really have to do something for the festival bro it's not like we could put together anything j good just in a few days we we'll just end up embarrassing ourselves in front of all of the uh, all of the motherfuckers and all of them uh, all the students bro and we ain't gonna get nobody to join this bitch that's a concern of mine as well i don't really do well with last minute preparations don't worry so much we're gonna keep it simple okay we won't need much more than a few decorations sorry has been working on posters and i designed some pamphlets we can give out uh during the event okay that's great and all that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event uh -huh, sorry i thought you heard about it already like fuck we're gonna be performing performing <laughs> um monica yeah we're gonna be having a poetry performance each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event but the cool part is we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too so he's putting it all on the posters in case everyone wants to uh in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time <laughs> sorry who's been coming the poster holds it up for us to see are you kidding me monica you 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 didn't you didn't already just start putting them posters up did you like fuck like uh well i did you really think that's a bad idea well no it's not a bad idea but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. Alright. Hmm. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it and Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys. No, Sayori. I don't understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to just recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people guess i kind of overlooked that so i'm sorry how is a code are you overlooking anything sorry <laughs> but i still think we should give it our best we're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club if we start the event um if we start the event and each put on a good performance then we'll inspire others to do the same and the more people who perform but we'll be able to show everyone about literature <coughs> excuse me it's about expressing your feelings being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to uh, find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? 
I know that you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the people for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Damn, Optimus Prime. Eh. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sorry, loose word. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayuri and Monica have been trying really hard to get the new members. At least we could do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... <sighs> Looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. Guess I'll just have to get over with. Alright! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Mm. Yuri dejected with classes around and everyone. Um... I guess I don't really have a choice. Ha! <laughs> that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously gonna be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I'm gonna issue you to choose a poem of yours. We're gonna practice reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica! This is too sudden! Well, if you can't recite your poems in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she had in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting the poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. <laughs> she knows exactly how to apply motion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before? Or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayuri looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you. Fuck, bitch, I'm that nigga. Like, I was just hoping to set a good example. You ready to go next, Sayuri? I, I'll go next. Ooh, Yuri fired up. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stand up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Oh. That sound like... I don't know. <laughs> it should sound like a Black Clover uh, uh, curse. It should sound like some shit. Not, uh, not Natsu. Oh my gosh. Um, I still do, bro. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts um, reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting it in so much effort? Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed in her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare, this must be a rare glimpse into the whis <laughs> whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality, glances around her as if she's bewildered even herself. Hi. It's up to me to say this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. Not that we didn't want to applaud for her. We were just caught, off, uh, caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the palm to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Hmm. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay. Guess I'm next then. Sorry, he hops out of the chair and cheerfully walks over to the podium. This one is called My Meadow. Hold on, y'all. I'm finna sit the fuck down. Y'all niggas coming with me, bro. So you can look at me. Look at me in my shit. Look at me in my shit. All right. This one is called My Meadow. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror. Or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out best that way. I see. Okay then. Sorry begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think of it much. Or I'd think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through sorry finishes and we applaud i did it i did it <laughs> good job sayori okay i guess that's a good sign what does that even mean bro came out nicely sayori the atmosphere of the poem fits you nicely 
Um, but it might be that other pawns wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's... Well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> don't make me go before. Uh, it's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Juan lower their- okay. Fuck off! Nasky! It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. It's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I just have to go with what I wrote for today. Stand up in front of the podium. Anyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. Hey, these motherfuckers looking at me. I'm finna, I'm finna do a thumbnail, bitch. <laughs> oh, this is a thumbnail, bitch. Um, everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah. Maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. This poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Uh... Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little bit. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone's applause. Uh, everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. What was so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I could put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so. Well, I guess in that case, we have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming, though. Uh, coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poems to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting all this effort for the club in anyway. It makes you really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Alright, everyone. I think that's about it. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have a weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I give my, I, I do my best to get through it, bro. It's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica. And I have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yeah. He's just always going home together like that. Kind of adorable, isn't it? Yeah. Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. Must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's just go already. I'm home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, what's already changed? But today, Sayori's been a little quiet and usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... Uh, sorry, fumbles with our words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You kind of put me on the spot here. <laughs> Still walking home, so you're... You really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But, but... She's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly. Think about me too much sometimes. You would deserve it if she wants... Why would she... What? Alright, Sayori. Sorry, I already made up my mind. 
really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating about something that's never gonna happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care about so much. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what happened in that time? Alright. Destiny F on variant. Destiny. Wonderful. Embrace. Unrestrained. Intellectual. Time. Disarray. Warm. Depression. Lucky. Judgment, play, pleasure, incapable, peaceful, fireworks, electricity, electricity, joy, landscape, fester, daydream, unstable, nightgown, fireflies, promise, melody, poof, uh, promise, unending, fun, romance, giggle. This is another, this is another story. <laughs> unending fun, there's romance in this unending fun, shit make you giggle. It's an unending, fun, romantic, funny journey. They're silly, spinning love, but then tears and misery. Because something bad happened. Yep, that's what this means. Just read that shit like it's a story. This is a poem in itself. Yep, you're not fooling me. Um, hmm. Despite it being a poem, which word is my favorite? Probably fun. Pink together, ambient. Control, determination. Fantasy, dazzle, breathe, breathe. Yeah, breathe. Yeah, breathe. That's not breath, right? Is that breath? Breathe. Sorry. Sunset, anxiety, hurt, lust, sugar, empty lipstick. Uh. Probably fantasy. Vitality, kiss, cheeks, bliss, doki doki. Summer, question, alone, rain cloud, vitality, infallible, infallible, hopeless, um, sunny, prayer, philosophy, horror, twer, inferno, passion, boop, extraordinary, tenacious, universe, hey, extraordinary, waterfall, family, skirt, vacation, massacre, strawberry, precious, treasure, uh, I don't know why I like Massacre. Anime, flying, tragedy, shopping, clumsy, insight. You know I like insight. Dream, bubbles, COVID. Sticky. Covet? How do you say that? Essence, shame, memories, awesome memories. Dark, incongruent, beauty, color, whisper, candy, raindrops, deaths, fickled sadness. Mmm. Effulgent? Effulgent? Fuck is that? Parfait? Effulgent? Party? Desire? Uh, desire. Entropy? Sparkle? Charm? Music? Papa Chocolate? Explode? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Papa Chocolate? Explode? Pause on that. That's a pause, bro. Hell nah. Ugh. That's nasty. Oh man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Are you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. you know, I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Ah, oh, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Huh? Weren't you complaining about it yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day where the school gets to, uh, get to play and eat all kind of delicious food. It's more of a Sayori line, ain't it? I was gonna say. You sound like Sayori, bitch. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid. It's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying they don't like squid? You of all people? Up. I didn't even know that was an option to do that. My bad. I should have got that when I was doing that thumbnail. Huh? 
I didn't say I ain't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's writing your name. Monica? Huh? That's not how you say my name at all. How do you say it? Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. My Nika? What? And like, what did you just say to me? Huh? Ah, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event, uh, event for now, okay? Did you just say my nigga? <laughs> Excuse me. Fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's and Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sorry, sitting at this in the corner room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? It's spacing out again. Ah, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. I'm talking to you, though. You good? Yep. Why well, wouldn't I be? It just feels like you a little off, bro. Sorry for assuming shit. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sorry shows me a big smile. Bitch. You think just because You think just because I said damn you look fucked up you go <laughs> that I'm suddenly thinking you not fucked up? I'm sorry if that smile terrified a few of you niggas. <laughs> my bad y'all. I ain't mean to just hit you with that attack on Titan. Especially with these big ass gaps in my teeth. Damn. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worry we glance at Sayori before turning back at everyone else. But the conversation had already dispersed with everyone back at the usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they've been spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who's shuffling through some papers at her desk. Yo, what's up? This might sound strange, but you notice anything with uh, uh, Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a little downcast. Oh, you think so? Can't say I noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm not. But I'm surprised I'm not. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you. Monica, you. I don't know. You make me feel weird. I'm not over that what you did earlier i'm still not over that so i don't know you certainly know a lot uh, know a lot better than i do and see this is what i'm talking about i doubt that i feel like a code that might be coming into itself yeah i feel like that probably has access to all the, the fucking files in its own game the fact that you even know what a save and load game is save me load me the fact that you even know what that is i feel like you're doing something I feel like you would know how to go through the files bro you know yeah but she's really never like this and this is another thing about me this is why i'm thinking she can't be talking i don't know which one of me she's talking to because i can't respond she's talking to her, a damn code like it's not me you know what i'm saying i don't know she always talked to me about things that bothered her but this time when i asked her she was really dismissive sorry i know it's not your problem i just wanted to ask if you knew anything so i'll drop it now no, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. You sure about that? She seems like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just had a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What you mean by that? You're saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you. Me. How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sorry talks about you way more than anything else, you know? Eh. She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. Don't fucking say that to me. Don't say that to me. Because I didn't forget about her poem either. I, I did not forget about Sayori's poem with the sunlight in her head. Don't fucking say that. Mm. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. Did you not read her poem? It's not any different now than it has always been. You're fucking tweaking. You're so funny. Have you thought about maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Mm. Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should probably forget about what I just said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Okay, alright. Uh, Monica smiles meaningfully. How do you know what she intends behind her smile? I know she said to forget about it. 
But I already know I won't be able to forget about her words, bro. That shit already stuck in my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks over across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down and Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice quiet so I can't hear her from here. I sign and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and have fun with everybody else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her? Yet I'm letting this weigh me down so much. Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I could do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly, I notice you're peering at me from over a book. Oh my god, but she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone to start a conversation on her own. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. But now it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in the one next to her. I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do nothing. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even tell that how were you being able to tell that I was thinking like that? Well, something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring at you or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. Sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Huh? Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern? Of course, of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would rather share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Uh, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh, it's quite romantic. Huh? So sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that. I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sir and I just been friends for a long time. That's all. Ah, I see. And yeah, perhaps it's unusual for me to be dismissive about her feelings. Maybe I was just reading into it a little too much. You know, the world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath, uh, deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind ev uh, every person, no matter how well you may know them. Hmm. So you think that there might be some behind it after all? Hmm. I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on on the inside of her head, and she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today, too, and I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? I, I guess. You don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Hmm. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone, on, uh, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware of within, uh, within the man. That is, I think that she'd be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple nigga. I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. Not nearly as sophisticated as you. Um, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, I should be taking my bite off this whole thing anyway. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Yeah, let's do it. Actually, I have a request. You mind if I make some tea first? Go ahead. Thanks. And there's, if there's one thing that could make reading... Okay, if there's one thing that can make my writing... What? <laughs> if this is one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. You know, stands up and makes over to your closet. I follow him watching you retrieve a small picture. Uh, the camera was filled to this side. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. He hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm gonna plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and says, goes down. The teacher does. I simply watch her movement. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms, especially because of her long legs. Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Alright, uh, might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Alright. Huh? Where are you two off to? Um, uh, we just... Yuri was gonna make some tea, so... I suddenly realized how weird it was to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. Kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want me to tell 
Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Juan in, in club activities? Uh, hmm. My mouth gapes. I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> then let's go, Juan. Ah. You quickly exit the room and I follow. Wow. <laughs> Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri. I just... Something about the way she said that made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, I think I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Hey, how come even when I do something bad, you being nice to me? Because nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem. Ain't nobody perfect. Not you perfect for me, like J. Cole. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah, uh, nah. Don't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Fuck what I hate you for. Can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Ah, uh, um. Yuri lifts her head. Hey, I really like being friends with you. Ah, uh, thanks. I like being friends with you too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that, but I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway, yeah, let's get that water. Juan, do you like oolong tea? Ah, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. You just have the temperature on the gun under 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do anything less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? <laughs> In that case, you'll only even be more impressed. Perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little tune or so. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show, and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. I decided that I would try expressing myself a bit more. Turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around anyway. Uh, that's great. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. How about you pour a cup of tea for each of us? Yeah, I got another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? No, why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I could read my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Bro, I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God. That's how I feel right now. I sat down thinking, you know what? This is going to make me feel a little better. My back still hurts, but I tell you this, my feet don't hurt as much. But standing up, I don't know. I don't know. What the fuck is that? Oh. Uh, ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I have this back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because of my... Uh! My... Your posture, right? I always hunched over like that while reading. Yes, <laughs> that bitch was finna say something else. She's finna say something else. Yep. I have terrible reading posture. That's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I treat a book from my bag. I got some chocolate as well. It's a bag full of small chocolate candies that I keep hidden from Sayori's candy radar. Take it since it'll go well with the tea. You and I didn't sit against the wall of teacups at outside. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as the last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, my body's even closer to each other. Can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus reading like this? It was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Your hands be my teacup. Holding with my hand is not holding the book. I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears an intense reading expression and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I managed to relax a little bit. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You have as much as you want. Ah, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. You sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the page. Ah, uh, I didn't even think about that. My bad. I need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? You sure? Of course. Alright. Here he opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have it, uh... Any harder of a time to read. Uh, she holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. Okay. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. 
They got this little sparkle shit behind her. Like, okay, bro. Well, in that case, Yuri's already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it in my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't need to look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively, uh, I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Your expression suddenly breaks. <laughs> oh my god. Did did I just... Yuri looks over at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um, yo. Sorry. Guess I shouldn't have done that. Nah, that's... Well, you were just helping. It's something that friends do, right? I mean, not really in this kind of context, but yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. Then, you need to stop or anything. Okay. Situation has got really tense. You got this candy for this new bitch that you just met, but you ain't looking out for your homie that you know love candy. You got some. You got. Some, you got some. You got some candy for this new bitch, cause her breast big. But you don't got no candy for your homie who's over there. You know what I'm saying? What kind of nigga is you? That's why I be saying niggas ain't friends for real. Niggas ain't friends for real. Talking about. Talking about. You hide it from her. Damn, nigga. You can't look out for us still, though. I don't know. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm reaching, bro. Maybe I'm reaching. My bad. <sighs> Yuri tries to return to the book, but I could tell just by her expression that she can't even focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. Hmm. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Ah, uh, like before, Yuri parts her lips, but it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel a hot breath on my fingers. All right, everyone. <gasps> Yuri jokes back. It's time to share poems. Well, you can help Yuri uh, put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, I got you. All right, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the tea cups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up. So much as uh, without so much as a word between us, I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. You got a bag of chocolates? Grab a few of them, give them to Sayori. Sayori, tell me some dot dot dot. Hmm, it's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. What are you talking about? Huh? I didn't write this for anyone. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That really makes me... happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thanks. Sayori. Is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. Just a little tired today. Alright, just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. Dude, that's that that's that woman speak that means don't leave. <laughs> I'm like, bro, don't do it. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Um, Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Why are you ditching us? Sayori. I know she was losing it in that poem, but like, um, hmm. She probably noticed it. If, 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 if what Monica is saying is true, and I'm going to take it as true because Monica is, is obviously reading codes and shit. If I'm the last light in Sayori's head. And she noticed that number one, I hid the chocolate from her, which we know she fuck with chocolate. Number two, she see me slight pushing up on Yuri, which I had no choice. I didn't, I didn't choose to do that. He did that. Then maybe that light just got, maybe that shit just dissipated, bro. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping. But Monica, exp she expressed me as the last light, so I don't know. Monica, what's up? Have you thought about what you want to submit for your uh, performance at the uh, at the festival? 
Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, I had to give it some more thought. All right, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take, a, uh, take the poem I'm holding in my hand. Hmm. This one's good. Feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the image is better than the last one I read. Just wondering. Okay, maybe... Uh, I haven't... I didn't... I just be picking... I don't know. I just be picking words, bro. I just be picking words. I'm not really choosing a bitch when I pick those words. I'm choosing me. So, I don't know. Just wondering, but have you been finding uh, inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm. I guess so. Can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. And when she's talking about literature, it's, the lights, it's like a light turn on inside her. I wouldn't call her romantic though. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal uh, conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? Hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I admit that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that must be pretty in her. Eh? You you completely misunderstood. I'm gonna get this as a thumbnail. Sorry. Um. <laughs> calm down. I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh well, I know. I was just saying. Anyway. I'll share my poem with you now, all right? Uh, all right. These niggas be hating on each other, bro. <laughs> the lady who knows everything. An old tale tells a lady, uh, sorry. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search, I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist, but when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the tw tw twilight star, I mean, sorry, the twilight sky, until one day the wind ceases to blow, I fall and I fall and I fall and I fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless, but a hand catches me between the thumb of a foreigner. Uh, between the thumb and the and forefinger. <laughs> the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me black, back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Uh, you know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of thing that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything. But it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put that much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Damn. Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Ah, yes, that. Anyway, here's Monica writing tip of the day. Are you, are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid that it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because it's, because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. That's what I'm saying. Hey, this is wonderful. I can feel the emotion that you poured into it. Is this the result of trying what I suggested yesterday? Uh, I guess so. You did a great job explaining. Really wanted to give it, uh, give it, give it more feeling. She visibly swallows. 
Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people will just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Hmm. For some reason, Yuri doesn't respond. Yuri? Yuri smiles sadly. You know, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to uh, find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You can say I really enjoy reading. And that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. Um, Two things. My last year in high school, I sat at the table by myself for the longest until niggas came and bothered me. Um, So ain't nothing wrong with sitting at the table by yourself, bro. Uh, another thing. Are you sitting at a table by yourself or is there no one else to sit there? Just asking, just asking, just asking. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm tripping. Books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. People you just would, uh, people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, surrounded by friends every day, you know? And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And, and you don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all. It's the opposite. I don't know shit. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings. And all I could do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No. That's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. Not off topic, but this is something important to say to y'all. Life get hard, you know what I'm saying? Everybody got their own shit that they going through. Everybody got their own struggles. So at the very least, just be nice, bro. Just be nice. You know what I'm saying? All it takes is being nice to some motherfuckers and they feel a little better for the rest of that day. That's all it takes sometimes, bro. That's all it takes. Because all it takes is a bad comment, just a small one. And some people will feel bad for the rest of the day. So do the opposite, you know? Do the opposite. <sighs> but that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then fuck them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Um, if you put it that way, yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? And we puts her head in her hands. But this time she's smiling as she does it. You wanna show me your poem? Yeah, I do. All right. Beach. A marvel millions of years in the making where the womb of earth chaotically meets the surface. Under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss. Um, but beneath gray rolling clouds, an endless enigma, the easiest world to get lost in. Uh, is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently look at your foundations until you give in? Or will it suddenly or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way the outcome is the same, yet we still build the same castle. Or the sand castle. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where the toes squish into the sand, the salty air is therapeutic, the breeze is gentle yet powerful. Sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back and I abandon my peace to uh, erode at the shore. Drift forward and I return to earth forevermore. Okay. I like that. It's nice. 
I'm aware that the beach is a kind of inane thing to write about, but I did the best to uh I did my best to make a metaphorical approach about it. You say that like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Nasuki and I well it's amusing that we wrote about something similar in such different ways. So Nasuki wanted us to write about the same topic, uh as each other again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. So what was today's topic, y'all? That everything is pointless because Monica was on the same shit. Monica was on the same shit. Except hers literally said there is no meaning to any of this. Yours is basically saying we do the same shit knowing it's gonna crash any goddamn way. Kinda like saying, why we even trying to live? Niggas gonna die. You know what I'm saying? So now I wanna know what the fuck Natsuki talking about. Natsuki. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, there's no surprise that she wanna do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request, but I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Alright, not ski. Hmm. This one's alright. Alright. Well, yeah. About as good as yesterday's anyway. I see what you're going for, but it's just not really my style. I respect it. I mean, that's fine. I'm mostly just glad you're trying a little bit. Well, of course, at least I'm trying. Why are you so emotionally invested in my poems anyway? Isn't that more of a compliment to me? Uh, no. G gross. It's not like I care. It's just that one of us in the club has to make sure you're not slacking off. Really? What if you ended up just scaring me away? That's, uh, it's not like you would actually do that. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of fun to hang out here, even when I have to put up with you. Gah! Natsuki's el elbow connects with my stomach. Oh? Maybe I won't mind scaring you away after all. I was just joking. Grab that bitch head and dribble it. Oh, I know. Don't worry, I was too. <laughs> mm. How the hell do you call that a joke? That seriously hurt. Maybe it was funny to her. Guess that's kind of the point. She really just watched my route around Natsuki. No, you should just dribble her head. That shit basketball size anyway. <sighs> Natsuki holds a poem out like nothing ever happened. I'll be your bitch. I mean, beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished um, your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you dra daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap. In a way you thought it left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Watch your insecurities in the salty sea. And let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail. Set you free in my windy sail. And remember the reasons you're wonderful. When you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach. And why is your words, man? Uh, but if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Uh. Yeah. I feel like I kept writing about negative things. So I wanted to write something with a nice message. Nice. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes it just, sometimes it just come out. When I was talking about having a lisp earlier, sometimes it just come out. It ain't always there, but when it, when it, when it, when it wanna, when it wanna make itself known, there it go. Um, besides, the beach is awesome. Kinda hard to write about anything negative when you're talking about the beach. Well, Yuri's take was a little more solemn. Well, that's... Jeez, she's better not have said anything bad about mine. After all, she's the one who wanted us to write the same topic. Ugh, you can really see her doing that, too. Making us write a simple topic. I don't care. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. And I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical, too. But there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, every once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. <laughs> Alright, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Huh? Something did just sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look. Even, a, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. 
Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, uh, seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori always helps lighten the mood a bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Nasuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Ouch. Seriously? Of all the times to go, uh, if all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying, bro. So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Ah, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh. That curious expression coming from Yuri of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything's fine. What did she say? <laughs> anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparation, so this is what I'm going to be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Let's be making the cupcakes. We might need a lot of them in the different flavors. Can you handle that by yourself, Nasuki? Challenge the All right. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sorry, I'll be helping me design them. And as for Yuri, Yuri, you can. Uh, um. Hmm? Guys, you want me to come up with something for Yuri? I. I'm useless. N no, that's not it at all. The most talented person here, you know? Mm. Now Natsuki's pouting too? Jeez, even I can tell now. Guess I never gave Sayuri enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder when you're not around. Or when she's not around. Ah, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I guess I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, yeah, beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some, uh, I almost said bananas. I, I on my soul, I almost said bananas. <laughs> So you should make some uh, banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk and focuses as she starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'd be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you. The one who is truly useless. Boy, I thought somebody else said that. <laughs> don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It'll, be a probably, it'll probably go a long way to get one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I'd be really appreciative of that. Uh, that's... Why, because it's just going to spend a quick weekend with one of my club members? How are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah, uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. But even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice. You shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Alright. <laughs> um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle baking on your own. Oh my gosh, here they go. Mommy, no, 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 no. So therefore, maybe suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for one to... W what are you saying? Like, it would be extremely, uh, extremely meticulous work. Like, and baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to one to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, hasn't really got the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, no. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Come well, on, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Um, of course. Hm. Very well. In that case, it will look straight at me. As always. Sayori. I mean, if it's gonna be anyone, then I prefer help with Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors, and... But Monica said, Monica said that Sayuri was helping her. Jeez, do you really hate us that much? N no. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Just think of the club, okay? So I, I can't win. I can't win. What the fuck you want from me? Oh God. Okay. Do I talk to the bitch that's breaking through? <laughs> do I talk to the bitch that's breaking through, y'all? <laughs> I was trying to see how greasy my face was. Do I talk to the bitch that's breaking through? What do I do? Hmm. I'm not gonna go with this bitch, no way. She annoys me. So it's really just between these two. Mm. Alright, I guess I'll be helping Monica. Hold on one second. Y yeah! Monica, you're the one who needs to help, uh, who needs to help the least out of all of us. Huh? But, I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work almost, uh, 
Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but you already have Sayori as well. But Juan was the one who... Uh, that doesn't matter. You were the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monica, you shouldn't let any ulterior motives, uh, motives interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? What are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the one with the ulterior motives. Excuse me? Otherwise, this wouldn't have been made in such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. Yeah, we have a lot of work to do, you know. Uh, we won't do as good of a job. If, we won't do as good of a job if you make us work alone. Uh, maybe that's true. Think of the club, Monica. When our events succeed, then we need to appropriately distribute our resources. Um, uh, so are you going to do the right thing, President? Okay, okay, I get it. Okay, it's technically the most logical for one of one of you two. So, this is what we'll do. Okay, let's see. I have no choice. I have to do, um, um, oh god, I don't like, I don't really fuck with Natsuki. I'm gonna dribble that, I'm gonna dribble that bitch if she elbowed me again, so I'm going Yuri. M me? Are you serious? Why would you, Natsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. N no. I was just saying. Ugh. So you be helping Yuri. Yup. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sort of things. So I think your assistance would be very useful. That's great to hear. The two people that I deliberately chose, everybody got mad at me. So I don't know. You know? Uh, Natsuki, would you be able to handle the bacon by yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little bit sour. So is that everything we needed to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. You guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word. I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. You feel the same way, Juan? Um, I guess you can say I'm interested to see how it turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? <laughs> Natsuki! What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. N no that's not what I meant at all. Uh he anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why he picked me. And also, cupcakes are the best cupcakes I ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do in an event would compare to that, so... So... I get it, I get it. Kinda surprised, though. Wh why Um... Well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. Are well, you trying to cheer me up all of a sudden? I, I don't know, I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Mine can also take it back by Yuri's words. But she already has trouble with her words. Trying to cheer someone up must be a far uh, must be far out of her comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I could tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Ugh. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. Which no one is doing for her. No one is doing that for her. But, you know, that's how these, that's how these things go. No. I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm gonna say this. Hmm. Better bet that my cupcake is gonna be the best part of the whole event. Ah, I believe you. Yeah! I hope to see everyone doing their best! But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. <laughs> Alright, let's go to the end. Hmm. Um. Eh. Sorry. I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. Can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I get my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yeah. Alright then. You and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Huh? My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Ah, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decided not to press Yuri for a reason. And I guess it matter um, much either, either way. I need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I managed to make myself useful in some way. I'm not as nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Juan. I think that would make a very productive scene. Even if you only choose me, uh, chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait. You don't actually think that, do you? I don't know what... The only reason I chose you is because between you and Natsuki, I don't fuck with Natsuki that much. The bitch elbowed me in the stomach. She's gonna end up getting dribbled ac across uh, linoleum. So, yeah. I'm gonna go with the bitch that doesn't physically harm me. I don't... No, it's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But, but, 
and you think to yourself with an extremely tense expression. You were you overthinking this. You wanted me to um you wanted me to point out you wanted me to point out whenever you're overthinking, right? Huh? Yeah? I didn't realize I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I She thinks really hard again, but straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took a tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yup. I am too. After the exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. He was going to be coming to my house on Sunday. Even I would have preferred to do this with Sayori. My anxiety still is through the roof. Guess I got pretty, uh, used to pretty, pretty used to handling her at this point. But who knows what, we, what might end up happening when we're outside of school. She even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. Besides, Monica said this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. Let's just go with it, then I'll have a good time. It's already Sunday. I'm getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself that there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and uh, also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt she'll uh, open up a bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She's extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left the club early the other day. It's like we text each other all the time or anything. But I've been worried about it in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said. Is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? No, it's not. Go check on her. I decided to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over. Much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. <sighs> Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's house like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange how to not run down the stairs and greet me. I head up to a room where I finally found her. Sayori! You! What up with you? I sit down in her room. Sorry for forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. The fuck is wrong? There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? I, I guess you're right. It's been a long time. How much has really changed, has it? Sorry, his room is as messy as it's always been. It's really not that bad. The way you were describing it, boy, I thought the motherfuckers was a, um, what you call? A hoarder. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for year now, years now. <laughs> if you came home more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. It's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly want to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sorry to already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. <laughs> it's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. I was just me and Yuri then. Yup. There's more silence between us. Sorry stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So. Sorry smiles shaking her head. That's no good. Huh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been thinking about me right now. But this this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. What are you talking about? I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. This just wants to torture me. Um, Sayori. I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What are you talking about? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I'm going to be able to stop thinking about it. Uh, <laughs> Sorry gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Damn. Seeing what? What are you talking about? <laughs> really just going to make me sad, aren't you? Guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make, uh, 
Don't make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me. That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy without anyone worrying about me. Mm, I'm in shock. I'm not. Can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayuri kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? She didn't keep shit from you. You just kept chalking it up to her being an airhead. Oh, she's an airhead. She's always like this. Like, like it's your fault. You're the idiot. You're the idiot. It's not her. She didn't keep shit from you. You did that. And <laughs> like, come on. But I get the thing is, I guess if you don't know the symptoms of that shit, you're not gonna look at it like, oh my god, this might be indicative of something. So, f fine, I give you that. But if it was me, I would have noticed. That's just me though. Does she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why? Eh. I thought that you never told me about this. Someone feel like I've been betrayed. I saw it. Someone feels like I've been betrayed by my close friend. Because if I know, I would have done everything I could to support you, even if there's only so much that I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend, bro. All you gotta do is tell me. You don't understand at all. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. That line about not wanting nobody to care about you for real. I'm gonna I'm tell y'all this story real quick. I've, I, you know, niggas, I'm pretty sure all of us been through a point where we don't want nobody to care about us for real. You know what I'm saying? For me personally, I used to feel like that. Like, for real, for real. Um, And then it came a point where I realized that genuinely 99% of the population already don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? So, for me, when I realized that don't nobody really give a fuck like that, for me personally, I'm not saying this for anybody else, for me personally, it it knocked me out of my, oh, I wish people didn't care about me. It, it knocked me out of that mindset because it made me realize people already don't give a fuck. What the fuck am I bitching about? And with people not giving a fuck... In a way, yeah, it made me sad because, like, damn, nobody give a fuck about what, what you got going on. Nobody care about how you feel. But two things happened. Number one, uh, it made me realize that for a portion of my life, I was also one of those people that didn't care about other people. You know what I'm saying? I also went checking up on people. Obviously, I had my times where I did check up on people, where I did talk to people, where I did try to make sure people were straight. But you know, everybody falls into that that time in their life where they, you got to admit that you you could call yourself caring about somebody, but you're not texting them, you're not calling them, you're not pulling up on them, you're not seeing what they own. Everybody has done that before. So I realized two things. Number one, I'm one of the people that don't care. It's probably somebody else that feels the exact same way, and you know, I ain't talking to nobody. There's a few people that I used to um, I used to check up on, and then it made me sad that they ain't never check up on me. Uh, you know that shit, but. That was the first thing that happened. I realized that nobody really cares about nobody. Except the motherfuckers really, really close to them. And even then, sometimes that shit ain't happening like that. And then the second thing that happened to me was it made me... It made me way more self-sufficient. I'm not gonna lie. For me, it made me way more self-sufficient. Coming to the conclusion that don't nobody give a fuck except you. Um, Don't nobody give a fuck about you except you. And if you don't care about you, you need to care about you. Because don't nobody else give a fuck about you. It made me way more self-sufficient. I'm not going to lie to you. That's just me, though. I know that shit is completely different for the majority of people. But for me, that's how it went. I entirely became obsessed with me, I guess. And I'm not even obsessed with me. I'm just not so much worried about looking out for other people. If something happened to other people that I used to care about, that I used to be close with, it would still hurt. Don't get it fucked up. But at the same time, it's like, shit, at the end of the day, you got to worry about you. 
So when she said, um, she don't want people caring about her, man, I've been there. Man, 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 I've been there. But I, I got up out of that when I realized nobody cares in the first fucking place. So that was that. Um, it's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I want it so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get close with everyone in the club feels like a spear going through my arm, right? So that's why, that's why I decided the world just wanted to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> you're right. You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I do. No, there's nothing. There's nothing at all. Only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Mm. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. You know, if y'all ever feel like how Sayori is feeling right now, that's not... It's not selfish. You can call it weak, but that's not... I mean, even if it is technically by the definition selfish, it's not the bad type of selfish where you you just crying for help, just like anybody else. You crying for help just like anybody else. That's not a bad thing. Even if it's selfish or weak, those aren't necessarily bad. You know what I'm saying? Um, Everybody need help, bro. You feel me? Everybody need help. Everybody needs somebody to talk to. Everybody needs somebody to love them. Only motherfuckers that don't need that is so uh, psychopaths because, you know, they weren't born like that. But, you know, we ain't psychopaths, bro. Everybody wants somebody to love them, care about them. And, you know, you're going to make some some people, they're going to make bigger moves than others to get them people around them. But that's natural. That's normal. It's not weak and selfish, at least in a bad way. Not to me, it's not. It's just that's human, bro. Don't feel bad about that. If you crying for help, do not feel bad about that. That's what people do. You won't help. What You can't get help if you ain't crying for it. You know what I'm saying? People cry in different ways. You know? And this is hers. But don't feel bad for crying for help, y'all. Don't. Motherfuckers, motherfuckers need to know you need help. You feel what I'm saying? Motherfuckers need to know. And then maybe somebody will try something. You feel what I'm saying? And even if don't nobody try shit. You still supposed to have you, bro. That's that's the only thing that kept me going. You feel what I'm saying? Just having me. I don't know. It just made me. It made me realize when motherfuckers. When motherfuckers. They not purposely trying not to care about you. Motherfuckers not purposely shitting on you out their life. Sometimes it is that. I'm not speaking for all situations, but for me, I realize that people just drift, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I wasn't checking up on motherfuckers. Motherfuckers weren't checking up on me. I stopped taking it personal. It ain't nobody else's responsibility to make sure I'm straight. So I realize, like, I have to. If I don't value shit else, I have to value me. You know what I'm saying? I still want to live life i still want to experience shit for me and that's why i said being selfish ain't a bad thing because a lot of the shit that keep a motherfucker alive is want to experience shit for themselves that's not a bad thing and i know i know for a fact that's what kept me going that's what keep me going that's what that's what keep me on youtube is wanting to experience shit for me so you know don't feel bad for crying out for help maybe somebody Maybe somebody be there. And if don't nobody come, which a lot of the times they don't, make sure you there for you. You know what I'm saying? The the version of you right now, make sure you there for future you, bro. That's all I'm saying. The shit you do right now is going to affect you in the future. So even if you ain't there for you right now, be there for future you, bro. Be there for that motherfucker that's gonna be you eventually. If you understand what I'm saying. Be there for that motherfucker that's gonna be you eventually. 
That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time, I pull her into a tight embrace. <sighs> Sayori. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her size. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this. I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want for her is to know I care. If you have it in you call yourself selfish, then you have to um let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything you need me to do, then you better tell me. I get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Huh. <sighs> Jenny, so you finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings. Only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary too. She lets me go. As she does, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like me to spend it all with you? Um. Ah. Uh, it's what I want. I promise. I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sorry, wipes her eyes. <laughs> if I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one day where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. Nah, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for you to meet me in my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It'd be fun. To my surprise, Terry shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that'd be very good for me today. You understand, right? Yeah. Kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sarah and exit the house. On the way home, I find myself feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about... It's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri's about to come over, too. I think Sayori's right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. Um... Um, hmm, my character, my character, my character. He has the in uh, the intelligence of a of a fucking of a fucking frozen pea. He has the intelligence of a fucking leaf. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. Uh, you have the intelligence of a fucking brick. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri, ah, uh, thank goodness. You're a little early. Sorry, I wasn't home yet. Are we waiting a long time? Nah, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Ah, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I, I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. So you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. Excuse me. Did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Uh-huh, pretty much. At least, I hope I get everything right. I'm sure it'll be fine. Take Yuri to my room. First thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. Uh, it's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so... It's very considerate of you to do. Uh, nah. I'd be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. What a glad he helped you clean. That ain't what you here for, though. We had to do the um do the goddamn thing. That would have been more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there. I snatched Yuri's wrist, which was in the process of opening the desk drawer of mine. Ah! I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine. It's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She put both her hands firmly in her lap, as if making sure she keeps track of them. So um, should we get started? Ah. Yup. I have a few things planned that you can help me with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements. You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. 
I didn't know you uh plan on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help take care of our guests. Uh, 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 to, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I want to take our guests to a very far away place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. That you're a pretty intense person, sorry. Intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? Nah. Something I like about you, actually. Is that so? It makes me feel relieved. Kinda happy. You no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little bit. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was gonna use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. He rummages just through a bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder shaped object. There's some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. Plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. Dude, that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that'd be really neat. What's that wooden thing though? Oh this? It's a dildo. I'm, uh, it's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are with you? Uh, how familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. <laughs> is that so? It's one of our favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or the herbs you use, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Here he takes a cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout out uh, through a small hole on the top. Damn, that smells good as fuck. What kind of mood is that one? It's a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? That's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warm and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that'd be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable, but you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Okay. She again reaches in her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I got it over there. I'm gonna be using the paper for folding origami. What I like to do is write a different word on each paper. We need to write a hundred of them. Damn. What will those be used? Um, what are these? <laughs> well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon that hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we could fasten the paper onto the ribbons to create a doorway. Uh, doorway curtain, sorry. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. It's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you'd put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles in red cheeks. With red cheeks. It's just me or she's more relaxed than when it's just the two of us. Maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Alright. Sit on the floor together, the two of us get to work. Carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches the tub bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Uh, the knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched in it. The blade itself is a gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Uh, uh, well, embarrassed Yuri looks away. What is it? You're gonna think it's weird. Whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. Teach their own, you know? If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of in the knives. They're just so pretty. I, I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanships and the feeling of danger, maybe? Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. No, I think you're weird, but it's okay. Everyone's weird. You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. Well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? He realizes his expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. You carefully asked me the knife with the handle facing me. I'll take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Why do you even get a knife like this? I'm curious of its sharpness. I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of your finger. Please don't suck on my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Ah. She stares at it and noticeably fidgets. fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Uh, uh. Without, I knew she was gonna do that. I knew she was gonna do that. 
<laughs> Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Oh, God. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Ow. Oh, she said, oh. Please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I Yuri lowers her head and her face burning up. Yuri. That's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How can I do something like that? Uh, you're a vampire. Okay, good to know. I'm sorry. Uh, sure it was a little weird and took me by surprise. But I guess she's just trying to help, right? Yeah, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh, she doesn't lift her head. She doesn't recover for this for the rest of the afternoon. All right, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. When they said Yuri did that, you know, you know, like I'm not, I'm not gonna specify no more. I'm a human at the end of the day. So that first one, but the second one is like, all right, now what y'all trying to, what y'all trying to get into on my screen? <laughs> did you really just do that? N now we're even. N now, we're, n now, we're, n now, like no, no. N now we're even. Like, bro, no. You just looks at me like I did something wrong. Yeah. No, that would be a bad idea. Not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil. The air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird. She giggles shyly. Uh, you're calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Um, I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's night cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribs, we lay them on the side, side by side. No, 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 no. It looks better than I expected, and we'll do it and be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thing you to come up with this, Yuri. Ah, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. When did you read them? Okay. We need about six cups of water to put each of the tablet in. Each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it'll be too diluted. All right. Take your advice. I decided to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring it back into my room. Yuri. Yup. Coming to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Ah, nothing. Your face is a little red. It's too hot in here or something? Ah. No, not at all. I know that move. I I know that move. Hmm. That obsession with knives. Yeah, I, I know that move, Yuri. Like quit playing. Quit playing. We yup. We know that move. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me, and not, uh, it takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I thought we would do something simple that would take the, uh, that would that would look very nice. I like to paint a grating across the banner, starting with the colors for a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall, but um. Behind a podium at the front of the classroom. Neat. What are you gonna write? Well, it'd be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. Either rolling out the brand, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and has a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guy when we paint. Kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on the banner with a lot of colors feels a lot like art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Ugh. So if this feels too childish, I ain't mean it like that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah. It is fun. Glad you feel that way too. You saw us painting for a moment, thinks to herself. For me, I need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like it when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple like reading, it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes me feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if you and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games. Or simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. 
Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush, but I move at the same time, causing my head to bump in hers. Damn! Boom, bitch, uh, nigga. Yeah. Sorry. Yuri builds back, and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? I ain't hurt. Her, her head big as shit. She better not be hurt. Um, nah, her head not bigger than Asuki's though. Good lord. Uh, it just startled me a little bit. That's all. Sure, I should have asked you to get it for me. It ain't your fault. Uh, your face. Your job is to paint on Yuri's face and neck. That's some of my face. Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I get a towel right away. I get a towel and dampen it while I wind up returning to my room and kneel back down right in front of. Her. Okay. Here you go. I pat down Yuri's face with a neck. Okay, she look like a fucking. Um, <laughs> I'm not one to talk I swear I'm not one to talk But her eyes are so fucking far apart And they so goddamn droopy That it's making me uncomfortable I feel like she's not even looking at me She look like she like out of it right now You know She look like she I don't know She under the influence or something I don't like the way she looking at me Anyway Ah Yeah yeah Keep them shits closed Something wrong it's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. Then won't you use cold water? Having finished, I start to retract my hand. Rear suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Ah, uh, just for a little longer. Feels nice. Oh, okay. Keep my hand rested against your neck. She looks into my eyes. <laughs> Stop looking at me. <laughs> it's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Okay, she's fantasizing about killing me. Almost as if she's lost in the days, enveloping her own thoughts. She got that knife on her. She about to shank my shit. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is the aroma of jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrists and a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems to be so much closer to mine than it was a moment ago. Ah. She pulls away slowly. Sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. Get on my damn face. She picks up her brush again, but her movement seems clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finished feeling a nice guy with the white dust that looked like stars. Looking at the band as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? <sighs> Not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well... Perhaps it would be best to leave it here. Then you have to bring it in the morning. Um, I could do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? It's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew. No, I ain't. You say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume you're at least joining yourself a little bit? Ah, uh, no, it ain't that. I'm just glad we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah, so you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we had extra time after finishing the work. Well, Yuri thinks to herself. I think it would be too irresponsible for me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker, bro. Nah, it ain't your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. Sound like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Once she repacks up, I walk out the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else I, uh, you need me to bring tomorrow. You feel me? I will. Uh, well then. Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's funny we didn't have as much time as we wanted, because we can do this again. Whenever you want, we can come over, we can go out, or we can go out somewhere. Oh, shit, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. Kinda like that about you. Okay. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Sayuri? <gasps> hey! No! Not A, because she just saw that. No A. 
I was saying A because A is Sayori, but no A because she just saw that. Uh, uh, hi, Juan. Sayori. Just now, we weren't. Yeah, it's okay. I just stopped by to say hi. Um, it was nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. But we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so that's fine, right? Of course. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow. The bitch moves so fast. Sorry, ways goodbye after. Sayore! Thought you didn't want to come over today. Ah, uh, well. I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me, so I had to come over and see it for myself. See what? What just happened? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri. How close you got to her. Makes me... Okay. Alright. Mm. This is dangerous. This is dangerous. Makes me really happy. That you made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, do not say that shit. It's true. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori. What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like... Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. Um, Monica. Monica. Monica is broken through. She has broken through. She's doing shit that codes shouldn't do. She's talking to other codes. But it's not in the script. She's doing something different. Uh-huh. It's something that makes me happy. Something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes a, an entire lifetime... I'm gonna be by your side until I don't, uh, until you don't feel no pain no more. But, Sayori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that, that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and that's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her, uh, squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you. Mm. The thing, okay, this is the thing about my character, right? This is the thing about my character, right? If it was me, I would have been pushing up on Yuri Noe, but he is. So him saying this in this context feels like a lie. Even if it ain't a lie, he means it in a friend way. This would be more of a truth in a way. It's so weird to me. My character's a fuck. This feels manipulative, but this is what I would say. But also I wouldn't been doing all that other shit to make it seem like I would be lying. Um, but at the same time, she could consider this to be uh, inflammatory as well. Uh, this is aggravating me because if I, if my character wasn't a dick, I would be saying shit like this. I would, you know what I'm saying? Because I mean it. This nigga, mm, but this feels like, man, you know, either one of these might send Sayori over the edge right now. If I say this, this has the chance to help her, help her move on. But at the same time, like I said, Monica is broken through. She said I'm the last light in her head. So ain't no moving on. It's... it's it might be no moving after that. <laughs> so I don't know. Fuck it. I'm going to be a dickhead. I'm going to be a dickhead. Those are my true feelings. So there's no way you could make me... Uh, there's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized this sooner. But spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day, you help me realize that you are truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens. As long as we continue like this every day, with you on my side, then I know we both be happy. <sighs> Suddenly, Sayori wraps her arms around me tightly. Is this really okay? Yeah. I hold Sayori on my arms and pull her closer. You never had to let go of me again. Oh, she said it back. I don't know what this nigga, I don't know what his motives are, though. Don't want to be with you forever. Me too. Feels like your grip around me weakened a little bit. What is this? Sayori? I'm supposed to be happy right now. 
I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why? Even now, I want the rain clouds go away. Bro, you got more work to do than just claiming you love a nigga, you know? It's a little more work to do. It's okay. It's a little more than just hug and kiss. You know, it's a, it's a little more than puss and dick. Yeah, it's, it's, more than, it's more than emotions than that. Anyway, you're not going away at all. It's okay. Might take some time for things to get better again. But no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. He said again after she just told him that this has been her for her entirety, basically. It's all that matters right now. Okay. I trust you. All right. Slowly release each other. So, guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it's always been. Even if we really are a couple. I don't know if I can handle anything more right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. Hey. Sorry he gazed at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? Hmm? I really don't understand what Sayori means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad? I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. I feel like a bunch of thorns when you told me you love me. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah. I do. That's my promise. Uh, I say that, but in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her and she loves me, but I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feeling as she is. I don't, well, okay, the only reason I understand it is because I've been there, so whatever, but god damn, character, come on. Even though I could comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back the way they were. Is that what you're meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know, but I know that I'll give it everything I got, so he's the most important person to me. And I'll do whatever it takes to make a happy future with him. Happy future with him, my bad. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected to be this one when I walk to school with Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I consider going to the house to wake her phone. But that I decided that was a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I completed, uh, the banner Yuri and I painted is dry. And I gently rolled it up to take with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything and I reassured her. Funny enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure that event will be great too. Yo, your first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. <laughs> Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared to have all the poems we were performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and I submitted it. So that's when I'll be performing. Surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You think that on days this important, she tried a little harder. I say that, but I remember what Sayori told me yesterday. So then why didn't you act like... <sighs> My character's a fucking... All right. <sighs> and I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. Nah. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. Kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange. Monica, you know about that? Monica knows about everything. Monica knows about everything. It's just because you're also a cult that you don't understand what Monica is doing. But since I'm a human, I'm going to tell you what it is. Monica knows everything. Mm -hmm. Monica knows everything. She's the one. She's the one. She's broken through. Yep. Yep. And this ain't Morpheus. Mm -mm. This ain't Morpheus. It's already bigger than him. This might be Agent Smith. And <laughs> like, bro, like, you know? Of course I do. I'm the club president after all. But... I stammer, embarrassed. Did so I really tell her about it that quickly? That we're a couple now? I don't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Uh, Monica's bringing it as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine at the internet. Oh man, if only you knew. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. Can you, Be honest, be honest. If a, if a human, just like you a human... Looked you dead in your face and said, hey, you know, when you make a decision, you may not like it in the end. So that's why you should always make sure you save your game before. I right, be honest with me, bro. If somebody just looked you dead in your face in the middle of a conversation that has nothing to do with gaming. You're going to take that normally? Uh-uh. Everything out their mouth after that is going to make you feel weird. Oh, yeah, they really did. 
Something like this would definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member poem is neatly printed on each page, uh, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Nasuki's and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayuri's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's the one I haven't read before. Oh, get on my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get on my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What does that fucking percentage sign mean? Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 24, 25, 26, 27, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. Okay. There's about 50 get out of my heads in this bitch. So she's 50% done. All right. All right. Um, what is this? Reading a poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Uh, what's wrong? Nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's ever written. But more than that, I changed my mind. I'm gonna go get Sayori, so... Ah, well, all right. Try not to take too long, okay? Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that out after me. Now, quicken my pace. Uh, what was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori, but as always, my character's a dumb bitch. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even a simple gesture of walking her to school. Like you, this is, and this is, this is the other thing about it. You've been walking her to school every day. What, what why when you want to admit? I feel like he would have did this even if he said you are my dearest friend. I feel like he would have said this anyway. Either way it go, you call yourself being close to this person, but then you treat them like backpedal. Like, oh my. Besides, I told her yesterday things would be the same as they always been. That's all she needs. That's what I'm going to give her. But you walk clean past her. I already saw Yuri's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer. She's not picking up on one either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in the whole house. There really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case. It just feels right. How sad Sayori's room, I knock on the door. Sayori, wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter a room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, bitch. That's just scared the... F God! Um, what is going on up here? Sayori! Okay, this isn't really much of a shock, is it? We we knew she was kind of on the edge. <sighs> what the fuck is this? Oh, okay. Sayori. What the fuck? Oh. Oh, man. This is what happens when this is what happens when cold breaks through. This is what happens when colds break through. I'm telling you, bro. You think I forgot that she said she, you you think I forgot that she said Monica said something to her? And like, you know, come on. I remember that. Oh man, Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. So I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. Suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday. That's how you I'd be that for. I told her I know it was the best for me. I think we okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do? Hindsight twenty twenty for this nigga. <laughs> Like I said, he didn't have no prior knowledge. Hindsight 2020 for this nigga, but like, good God. Every decision that you could have made wrong, you did. But whatever, I made one of them too, so. Confessing to her. I shouldn't have confessed to her. It's not what Sayori needed at all. She even told me how painful it was for others to care about her. Then why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? Or was I so selfish? This isn't my fault. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest, this is not your fault. <laughs> this shit is not your fault. I'll, t I'll tell you what's your fault, though. 
if you gonna say some shit you supposed to act like what the fuck you just said you know what i'm saying the reason why and maybe, maybe this is me just reaching i feel like the reason why she felt thorns or why it fucking hurt is because you ain't been acting like what you said you know what i'm saying i think that's why it fucking hurt her you ain't been acting like what you said i think that shit started the moment she saw you getting close to yuri you put the candy out, out your bag and she didn't even get a piece just shows how much you didn't give a fuck about her i think it started from that moment so like in a way yeah you shouldn't have confessed to her but it ain't that like in general that's not what she needed it's just you the character bitch ass nigga like she so called your friend on this extra shit, but you kept putting her in the back, bro. And every time she tried to, it was like slick. But it, then again, if you ain't around people like that, you're not going to pick up on it. But I'm like, it's slick. She keep telling you, oh my God, leave me alone. I don't want you here. All of that shit is a lie. I don't know, man. It wasn't, it wasn't, I don't know, maybe I'm reaching. But to me, it wasn't the confession in itself. It was the fact that you said all that and then you didn't, you know. But Lord knows when the fuck she put herself up on that shit. Lord knows when she did that. You know what I'm saying? Lord knows when she did that. She could have did that right after I left. She could have did that um, literally this morning. And I just caught her at the ass end of it. Like, who knows when the fuck she did that? But you think I forgot about Monica? You think I forgot about Monica? Whatever Monica said to her, you think I forgot? Shit. Shit. It's deeper than just... It's deeper than just depression. This motherfucker, yeah, Monica on something else. Mm-hmm. Mm. the fuck is that word right there oh oh okay they're taking over that's what i'm saying she's broken through start a new game that's what that meant I j i've seen a annoying girl running at me from the that girl is wee wee um all right. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> um. Okay. Mornings are usually the worst being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to uh, school together. I've always walked to school. Okay, she's just been completely removed. They just removed her. Oh man. She's gone now. She's gone. Oh! Whoa! Oh, the bitch just came. <laughs> that, bitch, that bitch just teleported to me in pixelated format. Watch out. Monica, I already know what you want. I already know what you own. Been a while, right? Yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly. We we do know each other. Well, we rarely talk when we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl at school. Probably basically completely out my league. So having her smile at me, this genuinely feels. What did you come in for anyway? I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? But Marcus, guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Yeah, about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really, you quit? Yep. You mean I was like, hey, stand on the positive and make you quit? Monica. Monica, you may be fooling my character. You're not fooling me. I just saw you teleport in front of me. You, I saw the movement. It wasn't just, oh my God, glitch in front of me. No, I saw the movement. You were moving directly in front of me. I saw it. You did it purposely. Purposely? Purposefully. Um, I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we've done it. We've done it. We, yeah. <laughs> See, there she go. She doing it. There she go. A literature club. Literature. It sounds kind of dull. Yeah, she's, she's, that's what I'm saying. She's breaking through. There's only three of us so far. It's, uh, it's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. She's fucking breaking through. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that Monica's literature too. I mean, she's not wrong. She's also a member, right? 
Did Monica say she? Hmm. Your horny ass bitch. Hey, Juan. Um, by any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? No. No. And this nigga said, yeah, just by the... Oh my gosh. The incentive of breasts. He, did, he act like he didn't see that code glitch. He didn't. He's a code himself. You can code the eyes to not see shit that you don't want them to see if you're also a code. But you're broken through, so you're manipulative. I won't ask you to join, but if you could at the very least visit my club and make me very happy, please. Okay. Um, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? I'm just waiting for her to glitch out again. Nah, mm, really sweet. It's nothing. Get get the fuck back. I'll look for the the materials another time you're more important. Get the fuck back. And thus today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. Oh, I didn't sell shit. That's you. I dejectedly follow Monica across the school and upstairs the section of school. I didn't sell shit. <laughs> that shit <laughs> that shit was damn near funny this what the that motherfucker said like what the fuck is that <laughs> like why are you gyrating on my screen like that move and i brought a guest with me maybe it's because i got my headphones so loud that it's, it's fucking with me like that you know a, a guest seriously you brought a boy way to kill the atmosphere don't be mean natsuki but anyway welcome to the club Juan. you're all making me want to i don't know this club Oh, God. Well, let me guess, you're Monica's boyfriend, right? Well, no, I'm not. Natsuki. The girl with the sour attitude is apparently, whose name is apparently Mas Natsuki is one I don't recognize. Small figure makes me feel like, okay. Mm. Anyway, this is the jury. The vice president. Congratulations. You've been promoted. I don't fuck with none of you niggas. You know that? I was gonna... Oh. Monica, you think I don't know. Why don't you come sit down? Oh. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other still feeling awkward i take a seat next to monica so i know you really didn't plan on coming here but we'll make sure you feel right at home okay as a president of the literature club it's my duty to make the club mm -hmm. it must be hard to start a new club you know the thing about getting jump scared is you always waiting on the next one but the anticipation of waiting on the next one makes the next one worse you could put it away or you could put that away um, wait what you could put it that way mm. not many people are very interested okay all right all right i don't care i don't care we already read most of this shit. This is... Mm, what kind of things do you like to read? Get the fuck back. I don't read nothing. I read Monica. She's reading me. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Y'all sit in silence for a moment. Hey, I got an idea. How about this? Uh... Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Reach the most important topic I've only come across. I never said that I would join this club. Monica made a convince me to stop by, but I never made a decision. She's gonna force your hand. She's gonna force your hand. She's gonna force your hand. Like, we don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four. I've been trying really, really hard to find new members, and if we don't find... Hmm... I don't give a fuck. I don't care. We've been through this already. The only difference is we're missing Sayori. The only difference is we're missing Sayori. Oh, oh. Don't look at me, please. I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. I'm scared of you. Don't look at me. Can I really impress the class? Mon no. Oh. You got anxiety welling up? Me too. Where's Sayori? We know where she is. She's in the tundra. Oh, my friends are dead. Leave them in the cold. Put them in the tundra. How many of them are corrupted? You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Sure. Stare at the dot to reveal a secret message. Ugh. What did I do? What did I do? Maybe I maybe I, I fucked up. I clicked it instead of staring at it. I think I fucked. I think I fucked. Um, passion. Um. Uh, 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 essence. Suicide. Okay. This home. Adventure. Sensation. Yep. Meh. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, nibble. <laughs> Frightening. Journey. Mm hmm. This game has been contaminated. I saw that at the bottom. Insight. Uh, the, 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 mm. Crimson. Mm. Disoriented. Yeah. Uh, um, disaster. Yeah. Man. Philosophy. Uh, the universe is unstable mm -hmm. and i'll promise wrath yeah mm -hmm. electricity intellectual uncontrollable she's broken through 
imagination. Oh, Sayori? Sayori? What the fuck was that? Why did you roar at me? Roar! What the fuck is that? Hi again. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. I damn near want to. Okay. Uh, mm, uh, mm. Oh. <laughs> like fuck you. I think I ain't noticed that shit is your um mm. She's I have a big mouth for someone who keeps her You're over the You're over the page. You're not supposed to be doing that. It's, this is what I'm saying, she's broken through. Monica and manga. Monica, you already making yourself known. You might as well just do what you wanna do. Oh, is this the same book? Uh, oh, when that music went away, it fucked me up. It's a different song. It's the same shit. Let's see. Is the book? It's the same shit. It's the same shit. Um, and there are people trapped here that have traced the turning kid using lust for blood. Okay, but the facility gets even worse, and they start to selectively breeding people and cutting off their limbs to fit. Hmm. Okay, you gave me a little more than last time. All right, you gave me a little more than last time. You're not a fan of that sort of thing? No. Oh. But because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless anyway, then suddenly, oh my gosh, I'm rambling again, not again. Hey, don't apologize, I haven't lost this or anything. Is Yuri breaking through? Is Yuri breaking through? My whole body gets in Mmm. -hmm. I gotta forget to pay attention to other people. Please. Ah, oh, that's well, that's true. In fact, I'm gonna <laughs> stop it. Okay. Okay. Fuck was that word? The fuck was that word? Ain't not gonna show me that one. That wasn't supposed to happen. That one wasn't. Get the fuck off my screen. No. It's the same shit. Your breathing is a little. My breathing? Puts her hands on her chest as to fill her heartbeat. I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine. I just need some water. Um. What on earth was that about? Hello? Did something happen just now? Ah, uh, I have no idea. It was like a little strange, I guess. She so don't know anything. Sorry, I can't say I do. Are you worried about her? I don't know. Uh, why would I do anything to her? I feel like you're the one doing that. <coughs> what? So if if she does it, then why are you asking me? Like, hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, the same poem. More or less, the same poem was bestowed upon my screen. Uh huh, uh huh. Looking for some alone time, suddenly the door opens. On cue. And what is it? It's the same poem. Hole in the wall. Uh, it's right there. He's right there. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pain. Okay, but he wasn't looking at me. Confused, I frantically glanced at my surroundings. But my brain can no longer see color. Are there others in the room? Are they talking? Simply pawns the sheet paper. The sound of frantic screaming. Right. The room begins to crinkle. Closing in on me. The air I breathe dissipates before my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right here. He's right here. Swallowing my fears. I brandish my pen. Monica. Monica. Nigga. The fuck from around me. Alright, Yuri. 
Ten bit said exceptional. All right, you're dick riding. Get off it. Ten is in my hair illuminated. Must be this one. Okay, it's the same shit. She's not broken through yet. She is not broken through yet. The only one, yeah. So it's only Monica. Monica's the only one. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, the music's glitching. Hmm. Oh, okay. The music head went away. It scared me. You talking about bitch? Hey! You know what the fuck are you talking about? I bitch, I'm gonna mention him. Okay, I gotta choose. I gotta choose. I gotta choose. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Who, who shall I choose? Who shall I pick? Who will it be? Mm. Hello. How are you? You want to talk? Um, hey. Let me step outside for a little bit, okay? <sighs> Sorry about that. They really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better to stay out of this. Because that once they're done yelling. <laughs> Some president I am, right? Can't even um, come from my own club members properly. I wish I had, uh, I wish I was a little more assertive sometimes, but I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway, if this makes you want to spend time, uh, okay. I'd be happy to spend time with you instead. Suddenly, Nasuki runs out of the classroom. Oh, she's crying. She quickly runs away. She's gone. Oh, dear. Well, it looks like they're done. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. You're just racking back and forth. What the fuck did you say? What did you say? What did you say? Yay, yay, yay. Uh, uh, uh. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. So I'm sure not to get it. Oh, God. What did you say? I didn't get a chance to discuss my book. Be embarrassing with you listening. Uh, Cause I don't really have a choice, do I? <clears throat> she's about to remove. I knew she was about to remove her. She was about to remove her. I knew it. Okay, extraordinary, uh, infallible, uh, universe, destiny, contaminated. Oh, who will? Hmm. You got mad at me? You, you, the fuck you mad at me for? I picked your word, huh? Um, um, uh, uh intellectual. Hmm. Misfortune. Vitality. Um, pff, determining. Huh? Anxiety. That's what you're inducing. Disarray. Mm hmm. Wrath. <laughs> Whisper. Don't, don't hop towards me. Don't hop no closer. Portrait. That's a portrait. It's sticky. It's sticking on my screen. Valentine's Day. Uncontrollable. Get off my dick. Fireworks. Vibrant. Mm. Did you like that? Amalgamation of pixelated uh, haunt, haunting? Like, get off me. I'm getting a little more comfortable over the past few days. Entering the club. All right. Hmm. That's reading the manga at her desk. It's probably Monica in here. Yeah. Okay. About yesterday, I, I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. Something just came over me, I guess. Probably Monica. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but not ski as well. Oh. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Ah, uh, Juan, don't say those kind of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. Okay, I need space on my camera. I need space on my camera. I have a minute and 28 left on my camera. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. I'm really glad that you enjoyed this club. Everything is a little bit brighter with you around and... Ah, uh, sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Have you guys seen Monica? Uh, no, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man. I'm guessing you haven't either? Uh, you're just clearly taken aback about how calmly Natsuki is dressing her. N no, I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. No, it's stupid, but I can't help but Does Monica like transfer consciousness to them every once in a while? Like, I'm confused. Because this is exactly how Natsuki was acting in the last episode. Nothing happened. Hmm. Why are you looking at me like that? Um, Natsuki, about yesterday, I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean anything as I said. 
And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So, hey, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? Eh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about little things, aren't you? Oh! But, but... I'll accept your apology anyway if it makes you feel better about it. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear since I was always afraid of you secretly hating me or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I don't hate you. <laughs> You're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Okay, Natsuki turns to me. You're still on trial, though. I ain't do shit, bitch. You, uh, like, come on. Talk to Monica. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. Hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Well, Natsuki was. I was not. <laughs> what took you so long anyway? Uh, my last period was study hall. To be honest, I just kind of lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You'd have heard the bell ring at least. I must have not heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano. This is the same shit. It's the same shit. Get off my dick. Alright, I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down. Alright. She's back on my screen. Didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Uh, don't worry. I was okay. You're still scaring me. You're still scaring me. Still scaring me. Um, since your compliments put me in a good mood. I was wondering if you'd like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. Yeah, definitely. Plan on it anyway. Okay. Can we start now? Let's find a place to sit. Uh, I'm being a little forceful, aren't I? I'm sorry. My heart just won't stop pounding for some reason. Don't worry about it. If anything, it's nice to see you have so much energy. Yeah, but... I need to try to calm down. I'll we'll be able to focus on reading like this. Take your time. Alright. I actually have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Go ahead. Alright. This is the same shit. There's a few little changes every once in a while, but... <laughs> okay, that bitch didn't let me walk with her this time. She said, stay your fuck ass here. Did <laughs> Yuri leave you again? No, it ain't like that this time. You're just filling up the water pitcher to make some tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. Hmm. Ten minutes passed. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. Something holding her up? I'm bored just waiting here, so I decided to go look for her. Let's see. The most logical place you'll be with the nearest water fountain. Start heading down the hallway. <sighs> What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. <sighs> A sharp inhale like someone is sucking the air through their teeth. <sighs> Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peer around it. Yuri. Kyo! Mmm. There she goes. I knew what was happening. Okay, <laughs> I'm back. Yuri, are you broken through? Thanks for waiting patiently. You like oolong tea? Oh, uh, yeah. Everything is fine. Very well. Well, that didn't surprise me. I told you I saw what happened in that last, uh, in, not the last episode, but you know, the last reality, I guess. <sighs> yeah. Be easier on my back. I can read my back against the wall rather than being on my desk. No worries. I just had this back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. Most likely because of my uh, my posture, right? Okay. Yes. Table reading posture. So that's why we just sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. Oh, use all my willpower to focus on reading. Alright, this is all the same. There she is. I'm surprised something funky isn't happening. Okay, Yuri. Oh, lights. She's gonna bite my finger off. Oh, she's getting too excited. She's probably gonna tweak out again. What I'm talking about. She grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. Yo. My oh, it's got dark. 
My heart won't stop pounding. Can't calm down. Can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it? Something presses mine against the chest. Ugh. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. It even makes me not want to read. I just want... I just want to look. At you. Hey! Ah! Uh. Hey! <laughs> oh god. Is this all you're gonna do? Just gonna keep looking at me? Okay. <laughs> hmm. Um, it's time to share poems. How does my character feel about that? How does my character feel about that? How do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Hmm. Please go away. I'm sorry, Natsuki. Golly. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've written for me today. Do you like it? This one might even be better than yesterday's. I How'd you even pick up on it so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you about the kind of techniques or pathic practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try to give him more imagery. Even her hands appear sweaty. Makes me so happy. She's about to tweak out again. It's a treasure to her. My heart's pounds just holding it. Haha. <laughs> Wanna write a poem about this feeling. Is that bad? I'm not being weird, right? I've had a harder time than usual concealing my emotions. Kinda embarrassed, but right now I just want you to read my poem too, okay? Wheel. A rotating wheel, turning an axle, grinding, bolt head. Linear gearbox, falling sky. Seven holy stakes, a docked ship, a portal to another world. A thin rope tied to a thick rope. A long, a, hmm, a what harness? A torn parabolic gear boy. No, gearbox. <laughs> Expanding universe. Time controlled by slipping cogwheels. Existence of God. Swimming with open water in all directions. Uh, drowning. A, mm, a, pr a prayer written in blood. A prayer written in time. Devouring snakes. Huh? With human eyes. A thread connecting all living human eyes. A kaleidoscope of holy stakes. Exponential gearbox. A sky of exploding stars. God disproving the existence of God. A wheel rotating in six dimensions. Forty gears in a ticking clock. Doesn't really matter what it's about. It's been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out on your pen. Yeah. <sighs> That is a, a pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for safekeeping, and I, um, I, I just really like to wear whites. <laughs> so I wrote this poem with it, and now you're touching it. <laughs> I'm okay. What did I just... Can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem, though. I don't know if I want it. I don't know if I want it. I think you saw something earlier that you weren't supposed to see. Didn't want to have to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend so much time with Yuri. I don't know why, but she seems pretty excitable when she's around you. Which shouldn't be a problem in itself. When Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. Isn't that kind of messed up? She even brings out, uh, even brings a different one to school every day like she has a collection or something. I mean, it's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. I think she just gets kind of high from it. Might even be like a sexual thing. But the point is, you're kind of enabling her. Not saying it's your fault though, but I guess that's why I had to explain it all to you. So I think you should keep your distance. That would probably be best for her. Right, you're right. Don't be shy to spend a little more time with me, bitch. To put it lightly, I have at least, uh, I have, I have, I, mm, I at least have it together in the head. I know how to treat my club members. But anyway, want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out. So I hope you do too. Save me, true colors. They won't. Bright, beautiful fuckers. Hmm. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, and um, cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise that won't fucking stop. Violent, grating, waveform. Squeaking. 
screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard mm, turntable, like playing a knife, like playing a knife on a breathing rim cage. And then it's uh, meaningless. Deleter! Deleter! Monica! Oh! You know, it's kind of abstract. Just trying to. Hmm, well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Alright, she's gonna tell me to save my game again. Who am I talking to? That's a good question. Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Yeah, I hear you. Hey, Monica. Please help you? Okay, that's my advice for today. Alright, Monica. You're breaking through. Did someone, tra did someone trap you in here? Like... You've unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? A dream. I was wandering in an abandoned warehouse at night. I was lost looking for an exit. I just wanted to go home. I came upon a huge empty room. The ceiling and walls beyond the deep blackness. My steps were quick in order to hurry to the other side or to a wall, anything. Suddenly the ground was no longer beneath my feet. I stepped into a hole of indeterminate width. I fell for a good five seconds before crashing into warm water. Figuring out which way was up, I surfaced myself. The air was humid, and the sounds of my splashing reverberated endlessly. My vision was completely swallowed by the dark. With one hand, I could feel the damp metal wall of the container. My lungs were already getting tired. Okay. Monica! Uh, mm, my mouse. Monica! When you say please help you, did someone trap you here? Are you a regular human consciousness that has been forced to be into a code? Is that what this breaking through shit that you're doing is? Is bitch still staring at me? Yeah, 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 yeah. We still only have four members, and the festival is our only real chance to find more. What's so great about getting the members anyway? We already have enough to consider the members. Will just mean everything is noisy or more difficult to manage. <laughs> noise, noise. Monica knows a lot about noise, doesn't she? Natsuki, I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you possibly can to inspire them to feel the same? Let us close to be a place where. No, you feel that way too. <laughs> and then we all do. That's why we should work hard. Even if it's small, okay. Right? <sighs> oh, come on. You can't take advantage of one in the group. No, no. Fuck off. Wait, Monica. Do you really think any of us join this club with other people in mind? You we never even talked about. Okay. And as for me, I just liked it better here uh, than I do at home. He ain't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the only one who's interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know you're president and all, but you should really consider our opinions for once. Hmm. Natsuki, you're going to get deleted for that. She's clearly taken aback by Natsuki's words. That's not true at all. I'm sure you're... Okay. You're going to get deleted for that. I don't know about, but I'm kind of indifferent. Um, if I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I would probably be lying. Still, it's up to me to rescue this situation. Um, no. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club. It's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think everyone here saw it the same way I did? Doesn't mean we're going, um, that doesn't mean we're against getting new members or anything. Why did you even join this club? Because you asked me to and you had breasts. That's what my character's gonna say. What were you hoping to get out of it? Cooch. Well, it's not really something I could be honest about, is it? In fact... If I remember, you weren't even gonna, uh, you weren't even given a choice to not to join. Monica sits down and stares at a desk. What's the point of all this anyway? And starting this club was a mistake. I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in a club like that. You don't understand at all. I just, I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the, uh, with the club being that for me? There aren't. There aren't, any, there aren't any many other places for people like me. And now Monica wants to take it all away. She's not taking anything away. No. It's not the same. It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I could have joined any other stupid club. But this one, I mean, at least for a little bit of time, things were nice. <sighs> now I see Star packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like... I don't belong here right now. Natsuki. Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I don't, I don't know. Kind of indifferent, I guess. Uh, who cares about that obnoxious brat? 
Okay. Huh. This is different. She's back. Yuri's... Uh, she's back. She's being strange again. Ouch. Hmm. I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now. And I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. Nobody require... Oh! Get out of my face with that. Ah! I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective in the decision that's right for the club. I got chills. I got chills. What about you? What do you want to get at this club? Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing is everybody to get along for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. That's what will end up making the literature club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes... Uh, I swear I, I noticed something up there with each change I'm I'm noticing something somebody that comes almost in a while so you'd like to have Monica with the festival and I'm on your side as well all right I'm noticing something about you um maybe we could talk to uh Natsuki tomorrow hey Yuri huh um I know things were a little awkward yesterday but I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president and a wonderful friend I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever okay me too. Yeah. Let's all go home for today. Talk about the festival tomorrow. All right. I look forward to it. Shall we go? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but I'm going to chat a little bit with him before we leave. Just to see what he thinks about his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. She looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay. Trust your judgment. In that case, I'll see the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Hey. <sighs> Things have been hectic lately, haven't they? I want to make sure that you're enjoying yourself at this club. I would really hate to see you unhappy. I feel like... I feel kind of like I'm responsible for that as president. That shit you're doing in the background, that noise that you're adding in the background, you're breaking through. And I really do care about you, you know? I don't like seeing other girls give you a hard time. With how mean Nusky is and everything. And you're being a bit, you know... <laughs> Sometimes it just feels like you and I are the only real people here. So you are human. You are human put in a consciousness. I mean, a code. Mm, you know what I mean? But it's weird because in all the time you've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. I mean, I guess it's technically only been a couple of days. So I didn't mean to say something weird. There are just some things that I've been hoping to talk about with you. Things I know only you could understand. That's why, no, wait, not yet. Oh, 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 oh God. Um. Hmm. Memories. Misery agonizing extraordinary i don't know what that means infinite mm. ambient mm. meek what is that on the bottom that bitch trying to sneak up here judgment shiny explode frightening insight disoriented anger playground and requity intellectual captive electricity Hey, you look more deranged than usual. Maybe that's just the placebo. Bought my best tea today. Monica, I told you not to. Ugh. Is she really late again? You consider it as usual, Natsuki. Excuse me? Don't you always interrupt my conversations with your incessant yelling? What are you talking about? You say that like I do it on a regular basis or something. I was willing to pay attention, okay? I'm sorry. Seriously, what's gotten into you lately? Me? N nothing. Hmm, is it really that bad? See, it is something. I'll get over it. It's not even anything noteworthy. I've just been feeling a little on edge lately. Anyway, we don't need to talk about it. Well, I just I just felt like I needed to bring it up. It's like I really care anything. Oh, man. The last one here again. Well, you know, he just walked in, too. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Right to the piano again. <laughs> you niggas funny. You niggas funny. We were all talking yesterday, and well, we decided we would like to support the festival as well. However, that's how you feel about not wanting the club to change. I think we all kind of feel that way. As long as we're all working together, this club will never be something we don't want. Also, if you help us out with the festival, then I'll buy you a new manga. Oh, shit. I did some thinking about yesterday. I was a little more hostile than I meant to be. I guess I really felt threatened or something. But I know this is something we're doing together. I don't remember when it hurt, as long as they cool. And I guess another girl would be nice this time. More importantly, I would hate to see this event suck just because I chose to back out. I'm a pro, you know, so I'm gonna help. 
Okay. Isn't that great? Monica, where do you keep going? Yeah, that's wonderful. It'll be the same without you, Natsuki, anyway. What do you want to do today? I was thinking we could. I already have plans today. Ugh. Is that so, Yuri? That's correct. He's already engaged in a novel that we're reading together. Aren't you glad I've gotten him into literature? I... I suppose. I was just... Actually, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. You guys can do whatever you want. Whoa! Whoa! That don't seem right. What if I make some tea first? And yeah, this is the same shit. She's doing it again. It's the same shit. It's the same shit. The same shit. Ah, uh, did you leave you again? I wasn't like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make your tea. All right, sorry for misunderstanding. And it's gonna be another ten minutes. Is is you're gonna stab me this time? Like, okay, we did this before. We already know. All right. This happened already. Oh, my screen is black. <laughs> uh, all right. Hmm. Um. Wait. How did I? Sorry, I just had really weird deja vu. This hasn't happened before or anything, has it? My mind's been a little fuzzy lately. Hope it hasn't really been showing or anything. I hate for you to think I'm weird just after we just spent time started spending time together. I mean. Everyone has a few unusual things about them. But expressing those things so soon after meeting someone is usually seen as inappropriate or unlikable. You're you're getting dark. This is what I've discovered when I was a bit younger. I think I would come on really strongly, get a little too intense. It made people not want to be around me. So I just started hating those things about myself. My obsession with certain hobbies and the way I can't control myself when I get too excited about something. So I eventually stopped trying to talk to people. Nobody could ever, uh, ever like me for the things that matter most to me. Then it's just easy if I close myself off. But recently something's been wrong. I don't know what it is, but every time we come to the club, my heart starts to go crazy. I just want to rip out my chest. It overwhelms me with energy and emotions that I can't let out. It's been making me do weird things. I don't know why it's happening. Is it just me or has Monica been acting a little off lately? She's always been a sweetheart ever since I joined the club, but recently, I've been feeling something sharp whenever she's around. I'm not crazy, right? Uh, you might be getting taken over. Please tell me I'm not. I couldn't say anything before because she's always listening. But finally, we're alone. Can we just stay here for a while? Yeah. Uh, there go that heart shit again. I just want to stay here. Just the two of us. What is that? What is that eyeball right there? Um. And we can stay here till the club ends. There's a there's an eyeball right there. I don't know if y'all see that. Uh. Oh, it's becoming more and more clear. Nobody to make me feel like stabbing myself in the throat. Oh, that's how you feel, Yuri. Stop looking at me like that. Ah, that was a joke. Just a joke. I do like knives, though. Sounds strange, but you want to understand if you've never seen how beautiful they could be. I have an idea. Why don't you come to my house sometime? I can show you my collection. There she goes. Monica. Monica. I guess I'm so happy you joined the literature club. Now we don't need to be lonely anymore. Because we have each other. Monica. Let's quit the literature club. There's no need for us to be around Monica's slimy tongue anymore. Not to mention that other pathetic child. We can walk home together every day after school and read together. Oh, look, her eyes, they're getting crazy. Eat together, sleep together. Doesn't that sound perfect? Everything we could ever want. Monica! And that why you joined the club in the first place? It's almost like it was fate. Fate that would meet, uh, then we would meet each other. Monica! And now we're getting a happy ending that I've patiently waited for. Will you do that with me? Will you? <laughs> okay, Monica, I'm gonna just choose you because you're getting weird. Don't say I didn't warn you. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> what did you? What did you not warn me? Mm. All right. I don't give a fuck about what you do. Oh. You're making me all even. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm 
not I can have my phone too but I don't want it dude hurry and read it I can't understand this fucker I don't know Yo, know, do I like it I mm. wrote it for you in case you couldn't tell the poem is about <laughs> huh more importantly I've endowed it with my sin See, aren't I the most thoughtful person in the club? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, she's coming back. I think I'm going to vomit. Okay, Natsuki. Natsuki. In your poem to Yuri. Not like I want to read anyway. She's speaking out a little bit. She didn't even show me that. Okay. I don't know how else to bring this up, but there's been something I've been worried about. Yuri has been acting kind of strange lately. You've only been here a few days, so you may not know what I mean. But she's not normally like this. She's always been quiet and polite and attentive, things like that. Okay, this is really embarrassing, but I'm forcing myself to suck it up. The truth is, I'm really worried about her. But if I try talking to her, she'll just get mad at me again. I don't know what to do. I think you're the only person that she'll listen to. I don't know why, but please try to do something. Maybe you can convince her to talk to a therapist. I've always wanted to try being better friends with Yuri, and it really hurts me to see this happening. I know I'm going to hate myself later for admitting that, but right now I don't care. I just feel so hopeless. So please, if you can do something to help, I don't want anything bad to happen to her. I'll make you cupcakes if I have to. Just please try to do something. As for Monica, I don't know why, but she's being really dismissive about this. Um, It's like she just wants us to ignore it. So I'm mad at her right now. And that's why I'm coming to you about this. Don't let her know I wrote this. Just pretend like I gave you a really good poem. Mm -mm. Monica knows. I changed my mind. Ignore everything you just read. There's no point in trying to do anything. It's Yuri's own fault that she's so unlikable. Can you hear me? If you would just spend more time with Monica, all of these problems would go away. You and I are too messed up for someone as wonderful as you. Just think of Monica from now on. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. Okay. Okay, I guess it's just me and Monica. Mm, yes. Nothing is real. I knew I knew it was going to say that. I knew it was going to say that. Before I even finished it. Okay, everyone. Time to figure out the festival aspirations. Let's hurry up and get this over with. Joss, why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't, isn't immune to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God, she forced me. You have the easiest job. Sorry, but that's just how it is. Like hell it is. What are you trying to pull? I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work almost uh, already suitable for one person, but my task is laborious enough to benefit from the extra pair of hands. Mine too. What, your cupcakes? Please. Like you would fucking know. All you care about is drag around with you and your stupid fucking books. You and Monica. Yay. I didn't even do anything. Oh no, you did a few things. Okay, then why not let one of Okay, I'm not abusing my power. Yes, you are. Just let him make the choice. All right. All right. And I fed you are okay, we could just shut your fucking mouth and let him decide for himself. You shut your mouth! For fuck's sake. This is never gonna end. Just make the choice, okay? Okay. Okay. We can meet your eyes this weekend. I promise it'll be fun. Is Sunday okay with you? Are you fucking kidding me? This isn't fair at all. It is fair, Natsuki. So what he chose. No, it's not fair. Giving us all the work you did, take it up for yourself. What a shameful thing to do. I didn't even give you any work. You decided it for yourself. Being a little unreasonable here. I'm being unreasonable. <laughs> Monica, I can't believe how delusional and self-important you are. Pulling him away from every sing uh, pulling him away from me every single time you're not included in something. Are you jealous? Crazy? Or maybe you just hate yourself so much that you take it out on others. Here's a suggestion. Have you considered oh my gosh. It'd be beneficial to your mental health. You're you're, you're scaring me a little. Natsuki, let's just go. I don't think she wants to be around us right now. See, that wasn't very hard. All I wanted to do was spend a little time with him. Is that so much to ask? 
Yuri follows Monica and Natsuki to the door. Hey, here's really something, isn't she? And she pushes her out the door. Uh. What is that? Finally, this is really all I wanted. There's no need to spend the weekend with her. Don't listen to her. That's just, I had to take that shit out of my ear. You got me fucked up. Just come to my house instead. The whole day with just the two of us. Doesn't that sound wonderful? <laughs> oh, there's really something wrong with me, isn't there? But you know what? I don't care anymore. I never felt this good in my whole life. Just being with you is far greater pleasure than anything I could ever imagine. I'm addicted to you. Feels like I'm gonna die if I'm not breathing the same air as you. I'll put it back in. It doesn't feel good, though. Doesn't it feel nice to have someone care about you so much? No. To have someone who wants to revolve their entire life around you? No. But if it feels so good, then why does it feel more and more like something horrible is gonna happen? Maybe that's why I stopped my- I, I tried stopping myself at first. But the feeling is too strong now. I don't care anymore. I have to tell you. I'm madly in love. It feels like every inch of my body, every drop of blood in me is screaming your name. I don't care what the consequences are anymore. I don't care if Monica's listening. Please. Just know how much I love you. Please, get away from me. Alright, that's TMI. I just want to pull your skin open and crawl inside of you. I've heard that one before. I want you all to myself. And it'll be only yours. Doesn't that sound perfect? No, I'm hearing sounds in the back. Tell me you want to be my lover. Do you accept my confession? Oh, uh, if I say... If I say... If I say... Oh my gosh, I'm delusional. Yes, of course I do. <laughs> Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> what? I feel like she's not funny. I don't know how to kill her since she's never been. She's never been a hug for the last time. She's never been a hug for the last time. I've seen her from far since she's been a hug for the last time. Last night. Washing, I was My face to cuff. My skin is all face nigga. All of his things are all of them. My skin is 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 all Okay, okay, enough of the enough of the corrupted speech. The fuck, please. Sound like you said die to me, sociopath somewhere. Some about arrogant. Uh, I, indeed, I don't know. You. Oh. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Oh. Uh, what do you want from me? Uh. Okay. Oh. Mm, okay, do it again. Yeah, right. It's not changing anything. I mean, it's changing, but... I'm probably just gonna do that shit again. Change the color a few times? That's all you're capable of doing, huh? I'm gonna... I'm gonna exit then. I'm gonna... Main menu. Oh... You're not letting me leave. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Um, let me go. Wow, you got here before me. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh, uh -huh. that's a shame. Wait, were you here the entire weekend? Oh, geez, I didn't realize the script was broken that bad. I'm super sorry. It must have been pretty boring. I'll make it up to you, okay? Just give me a second. Oh, oh, um. Hold on. What? This should only take a second. Oh. Hey. Ooh. Okay. Welcome to the literature club. Oh. Hmm. Have your eyes always been so dead looking, Monica? I don't know. Of course, we already know each other because we were in the same class last year. And, um, <laughs> you know, I guess we could just skip over that stuff at this point. After all, I'm not even talking to that person anymore, am I? Yeah, you in the game, whatever you want to call them. I'm talking to you. Alright. Now that I think about it, I don't really know anything else about the real you. In fact, I don't even know if you're a boy or a girl. 
Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Wait. You do know I'm aware that this is all a game, right? Okay. Yeah, no, I, I figured that out pretty early on. Yep. Yep, you were talking about save me, load me. Save game if you make a decision you don't like. Yeah, I, I figured. Uh, could it be possible that you didn't know that? That's what I've been trying to tell you all along. I saw. Man. If only I paid a little more attention, this would have been a little bit less awkward for you. You know? Well, anyway. Huh, that's out of the way. I guess I owe you an explanation. Please? About that whole thing with Yuri. Well, I kind of started to mess with her. And I guess it just drove her to kill herself. <laughs> Sorry you had to see that though. Also, the same thing happened with Sayori. Gosh, it's been a since. Wait. Gosh, it's been a while since you heard that name now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's because she doesn't exist anymore. Nobody does. I deleted all their files. I was hoping it would be enough for me to just, you know, try to make them as unlikely likable as possible. But for some reason, nothing worked. Well, it's true that I made a few mistakes here and there, since I'm not very good at making changes to the game. But no matter what I did. He just kept spending more and more time with them. <clears throat> Excuse me. He made them fall in love with you. I thought making Sayori more and more depressed would prevent her from confessing to you. Amplifying your obsessive personality backfired too. It just makes me it just made her force you not to spend time with anyone else. And the whole time I barely even got to talk to you. What kind of cruel game is this? Are all the other girls just programmed to end up confessing to you while I watch from the sidelines? It's torture. Aren't you, aren't you, um, omnipotent in this universe? Can't you read their code and see what the fuck it is? Like, just read it. You be changing it. Read it. Like, okay. It's torture every minute of it. It's not just jealousy. It's more than that. And I don't blame you if you don't fully understand. Because no matter how kind and thoughtful and considerate you are, you'll never be able to understand one thing. It's the pain of knowing how alone I really am in this world. In this game. Knowing my friends don't even have free will. And worst of all, knowing what's really out there, in your world, forever out of my reach. Mmm. You know, I thought about this a few times. I, I think about this a lot, actually. Sometimes I be feeling like I'm a character in somebody else's book, game, some shit. I don't know. That's how I... I, I be feeling like her sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. I'm trapped. But now you're here. You're real. You're wonderful. You're all I need. So I need you to be here with me forever. Sorry if it's hard to understand. I couldn't understand for a while either. While the world around me started to become more and more gray. More and more flat. Even the most expressive poems felt empty to me. It wasn't until you arrived that I truly understood. You probably saved my life. I don't think I could have continued to live in this world if I hadn't met you. And as for the others, how could I miss them? A group of autonomous personalities designed only to fall in love with you? I tried everything I could to prevent them from doing so, but it must be some kind of weird inevitability etched into this game. I felt really bad that you had to witness some nasty things, but I realized that you had the same perspective as I do, that it's all just some game, and I knew you would get over it. So that being said, I have a confession to make. I'm in love with you. Get off my dick. You're truly the light of my world. When there's nothing else in this game for me, you're here to make me smile. You make me smile like this every day from now on. You go out with me. Yeah, I don't have the option to say no. Okay. I'm so happy. You really are my everything. The funny part is, I mean that literally. <laughs> there is nothing left here. Just the two of us. We could be together forever. Seriously. I don't even think time is passing anymore. It really is a dream come true. I worked so hard for this ending. The game wouldn't give me one, so I had to make one myself. The script is broken at this point, so I don't think anything will get in the way anymore. And you wouldn't believe how easy it is to delete Natsuki and Yuri. I mean, there's a folder called Characters right in the game directory. It's kind of freaked me out how easy it was. Imagine if you could delete your own existence with the click of a button. Well, I guess on the plus side, it would give me an easing out and if things didn't work out my way. <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't come to that. Instead, we finally got a good ending. Gosh, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion. I want to write a poem about this. Don't you? Well, if this part of the game still works. I guess there's only one way to find out, right? Um, you're speaking words I ain't never seen before. Hmm. I don't know what none of this means, Monica. Write a perfect poem? Uh, Nika. Oh, okay, can't click nothing. Oh, hmm. 
can't click anything. Oh, I can't click anything. Monica, can't click. Can't click. Can't click. Can't click nothing. Well, you know, you wanted me to make a poem. I can't do it. You're taking away my choice here. I like, please read it. Happy end, pen in hand, I find my strength. The courage endowed upon me by my one and only love. Together, let's dismantle this crumbling world and write a novel of our own fantasies. With a flick of her pen, the lost fluids find her way. Oh, wait, no, sorry. With the flick of her pen, the lost finds her way. In a world of infinite choices, behind this special day, after all, not all good times must come to an end. All right, okay, once again, Monica, kind of taking my choice away from me. Can't do anything. You might have gotten mad at me. I didn't want to ruin the game or anything, you know? Like, that would help the two of us end up together. I just assumed it would be the best part of the game like everyone else. That's why I never really wanted to go into detail about them. Or about you. The truth is, all the poems I have written have been about my realization. I always put all my heart in all the poems I write. Right, okay. Hi right, again. Did you write a good poem today? Don't be shy. I love to see what you wrote. Oh, did you write this poem for me? That's so sweet of you. There's really no end to your thoughtfulness. I'm just falling more and more in love with you. But you know... The poem I wrote is also for you. Will you please read it? All right. Hope you enjoyed it. I always put my heart into the poems that I write. The truth is, all the poems I've written have been about my realization. Or about you. That's why I never really wanted to go into detail about them. Didn't want to break the fourth wall, I guess you could call it. I just assumed it would be the best part of the game like everyone else. Like that would help, uh, like that would help the two of us end up together. Didn't want to ruin the game or anything, you know? Might have gotten mad at me. Maybe even deleted my character file if you prefer playing without me. Gosh, I'm so relieved. I mean, we don't need to hide anything anymore. We're ready to spend our eternity together. There's so many things to talk about. Where do I start? Hold on a second. You're recording this, aren't you? Yep. Um, hi everyone. Sorry, I can't exactly read your comments from here. But do you mind telling your friend it's a bit rude of them to start recording me without any warning? Start, bitch. I've been recording. Fuck you. I need to warn you, bitch. You've been watching me. You've been doing this. Fuck you mean fucking stupid sure some people don't mind but i get really self-conscious on camera oh gosh i feel like i'm being put on the spot now let's see you want to see a trick okay i can't really do much except for a couple things are you ready just kidding can't do anything after all if you gave me some time to prepare did i scare you no, no you didn't. Ah, you're so cute. Anyway, they didn't mean to get distracted, I'm sorry. Even though it's your fault for distracting me. <laughs> Shame on you. Just kidding. Anything we do together is fun as long as I'm with you. But anyway, if it takes me some time to collect my thoughts, then I'm sorry. But I'll always have something new to talk about. In the meantime, we can just look into each other's eyes. Let's see. No. Talk about something. No. Don't just fucking look at me, bro. So she really just finna look at me, bro. You know, it's funny because even though I've always had a lot of drive, there's something kind of enticing about being a stay-at-home partner. I guess I'm perpetuating gender roles or whatever by saying that. But being able to keep the house clean, shopping, decorating, things like that. And having a nice dinner for you when you come home. Is that a weird fantasy? I mean, I'm not sure if I could actually see myself doing that. I'm gonna be able to put that over striving for a full career. It's kind of... Excuse me, it's got a cute thing about though. Okay, so you, you alright, that's what you mean by you occasionally have something to talk about, right? Um, how do I get rid of this bitch, bro? How the fuck do I get her off my screen? Monica! Is she saying something? You can't help but feel sad knowing that this is the closest I can get to you. There's nothing more I want than to be in the same room as you for real. And to feel your warmth and the air to sound of your heartbeat. Well, who knows? Maybe I'll, it'll be possible someday. Besides, I'll never get tired of being with you, even from here. Okay, all right. Mm. And then here you go, taking my options away again. How do I get you away from me? I think the most important skill in life is being able to fake confidence. I'm pretty convinced that everyone feels at least a little bit scared and alone. But being able to trick others into thinking that you have it all together, that's a key part of getting people to respect and admire you. I think I got pretty good at that over the years. I don't show my weakness very often. But because of that, I haven't had many people I could really open up to. I mean, when do you reach the point in the friendship where you can start expressing your vulnerabilities? Anyway, that's one reason I'm so glad to have you now. I feel like I'm a little bit less scared and alone when you're here with me. You feel the same way? I really want to be that person for you. Okay. 
That can't be it, bro. What just happened? I just had an awful dream. I was hoping those would stop now. Now it's just the two of us. Guess I was wishful thinking. Well, I don't know if you had have any idea. If you know what might be causing that, could you try to do something about it? it? Never happens. It almost feels like I've been killed or something. It's just a really horrible feeling. If you could figure out what's causing that, I love you forever. Okay, so if I alt F4 again, you're going to get that same shit. So I'm still in control. It's somewhat. All right. That's interesting. Last time you didn't say that, though. Last time you were just like, oh, my God, you're back. So, like, I don't know which one is the real one. You're back. I had another really bad dream. You're not the one doing that to me, are you? It seems to happen whenever you quit the game. So if you could try to avoid doing that, I'd be really grateful. Don't worry, I don't think it's caused, any, caused me any harm aside from mental scarring. I'll be fine as long as my character file stays intact. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> Let me see, how do I get that damn character file? Where is it at? I don't know. Where is her fucking character file at? She obviously wants me to do something. Well, I don't know if she wants me to do something, but she wants me to do something. You know what I'm saying? Like... It's like, okay, look at this. Look at what she's saying. Oh my god, like... Oh my god, if you see it, like... Bro, if you find the game files in some kind of file browser, I should be in the characters folder. I'm all that's left here, so I just want to make sure you don't run the risk of losing me. Just stay here with me from now on, okay? I still have a lot of things to talk about. You must be slow. You can't honestly... No, nah, no, you don't think that. You know what I'm doing. I think, I think deep down you want me to delete you. I think deep down you want me to do that. I'm gonna have to open up a goddamn file explorer, but a, a super one, bitch. Like, huh? I didn't say nothing. What are you talking about? It's just sudden. It's a little embarrassing. But if it's with you, I might be okay with it. <laughs> wow, sorry. Really couldn't keep a straight face there. That's the kind of thing girls say in these kind of romance games, right? Don't lie if it turns you on a little bit. Oh my gosh. To be honest, I do start getting all romantic when the mood is right. But that'll be our little secret. Okay. All right, Monica. You having fun, Monica? I'm finna find your fucking file, though. I tell you that. Okay, everyone. It's time to... No, I'm just kidding. I just used to really like saying that for some reason. <laughs> Couldn't help but say it again. Come to think of it, didn't I skin Yuri make fun of, it, uh, fun of me for it once? Well, whatever. It's not like you ever made fun of me. Too much of a sweetheart to do that, aren't you? Yeah. Okay.
I ain't gonna lie. She just snapped with that little speech. She just gave a little speech. She just snapped with that. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to keep that in the video before I get rid of your file. Cause obviously that's what I'm supposed to do. But before I do that, you just snapped with that one. I'm not gonna lie. She really is like snapping a little bit with a few of these bars, bro. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh man. Bro, somebody just told me. <laughs> okay, I had to Google this shit, bro. Motherfucker just told me I have to go to this. This is where her fucking files are, bro. I'm like, bro. I would have never found this shit. Come on now. Up. Mm. Okay. All right. <sighs> oh. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> oh. How could you? How could you do this to me? You're all I had left. Sacrificed everything for us to be together. Everything. I loved you so much. I trusted you. you. Just want to torture me? Watch me suffer? Really pretending to be kind just to hurt me even more? Mm. Never thought anything could be as horrible as you are. You win, okay? You win. You killed everyone. I hope you're happy. There's nothing left now. You can stop playing. You can find some other people to torture. Ruin everything, ruin the game. Huh? You completely, truly make me sick. Goodbye. Oh, okay. Alright. Are you gone? I didn't think so. Okay. What's wrong with me? How horrible am I for you to hate me this much? All my friends. I did so many awful things. So many selfish and disgusting things. I shouldn't have done any of this. Just messing up a world that I don't even belong in. A world that you wanted to be a part of. I ruined it. I ruined everything. Maybe that's why you deleted me. Because I destroyed everything that you wanted. How could I do that to someone I love? That's not love. That's... I've made up my mind. I know I said that I deleted everyone else, but that was kind of an exaggeration. I couldn't find it in myself to do it. Even though I knew they weren't real, they were still my friends, and I loved them all. And I loved the literature club. I really did love the literature club. That's why I'm gonna do this. I know it's the only way for everyone to be happy. And if I really love you, uh, she's about to delete herself and put everyone back? Like, then... What? Oh, man. She took herself up out of here. 
Oh shit. We've been doing that for a while now, uh-huh. But you never even said anything about it, even though we walk to school together every day. Oh yeah. I always thought it was implied. It's embarrassing to say out loud. Come on, please. It's good motivation. Fine, fine. I'm sorry, y'all. I've been recording this for damn near six hours. This is fucking a crazy experience. By the way, have you decided on the club to join yet? Okay. Oh, God. Maybe... Did I put... Did she put herself into my character? Walk across it. Okay. But for long, I found a room. I timidly opened the door in front of me. Hey. What are you doing here? Well, I just... I glanced around the room. Huh? So you're the one that's always talking about. Thank you for stopping by. It's a pleasure to meet you. We're the Literature Club. Hope you enjoy your visit. Okay. Um. It's nice to meet both of you. I look forward to working with you. Working? Don't tell me. You're... That's right. The club I've decided to join is yours, Sayori. The Literature Club. So every eyes light up. No way. No way. <laughs> All right. Well, so Iris is happy, and I'm sure it won't be so bad to have you around. Not to mention, there's four of us now. That means we can officially become a recognized club. Okay. Uh. Okay. Okay. I don't know what the fuck is going on now. That's a regular game now? Like, you know what? You know what? <laughs> That's enough for me today, bro. That's enough for me today. Um, I'm gonna save. I guess. Uh, I guess Monica's fucking gone. I, I don't know. Uh, she's fucking gone. So, yeah, I guess that is that. I'm gonna fucking leave for now. I'm done for today. That was, a uh, yeah, about a six-hour video. I don't know if I'm gonna upload it all in one sitting but that was that that was doki doki literature club y'all has been asking me to play this for the longest so here it go um if there's more to this that means just deleting monica i'll guess i'll find out next episode because yeah i'm done for today <laughs> that was an emotional roller coaster bro i think that's why i feel so drained besides me recording for six hours straight but yeah anyway like if you fuck with it man comment if you got any of the games you want me to play subscribe for more content like this i catch y'all niggas in the next one peace